here when we are saying the self is it the same as the mind or the soul see when we were talking about this words and meanings you know uh, what we said and i am repeating it that these words are assign some meaning by the human being right and these meanings corresponds to some reality which is there in existence so we have a reality in existence then we are using some words to indicate that reality and this words basically gives some description about the reality so this is description about the reality is what we are calling as meaning so we have the word we have the meaning we have the reality the ultimate idea is that we should be able to see the reality okay <clears throat> now in the light of this what we are saying is that let us look at the reality directly and then you know we can decide what word to use but to point towards that reality we have to use some word so we have used this word self to point towards the reality you know reality of consciousness that we are and in that consciousness some imagination is going on so now i am trying to draw i mean your attention towards that reality of consciousness you are paying attention to it and at one point of time you are able to see that yes this is you know the reality that is being talked about so you can see your imagination you can see your desire thought expectation okay. so now slowly you understand that this is the reality that is being talked about now this background i am giving because different traditions at different time have used different words right to represent the reality right. so when you are using those words you know when we are using those words we have to be very careful we have to look at these words with their history with their culture you know so when you say is mind same as self is soul self same as self right then i would suggest that you know you have to first see what is the context in which it is being used but i can give a very general response you know presuming that kind of you know history that kind of culture so mind for example is used for what we are calling as imagination presently this feeling this desire thought and expectation put together is what we are calling as imagination and in many traditions in many culture this mind is used for this imagination so you can see this imagination as a reality in yourself and now you can say that yes this is what is you know indicated by the word mind but this is not true for all you know systems of thought there have been system of thoughts which call mind as just this expectation just this selecting and testing but in most of the time for example if you take buddhism you know this mind is used for this imagination and it includes all this desire thought and expectation this imaging this analyzing and comparing this selecting and testing all this is put together similarly the soul has been used in different uh, sense that is representing different reality in general if you look at the major traditions of india this soul is used for the highest activity of the self that is the activity of realization that 
we will talk about some time. So this activity of realization is what is called as soul, as Atma. But in many places, it is also used as the synonymous of the self. Synonymous of the self. So what we did was, instead of getting into those details, we said, okay, our concern is basically the reality. And in this case, this reality of consciousness, right? And try to understand this consciousness. Try to look at this reality directly. And all the words that we are using is useful to draw your attention towards this reality. And once you start paying attention to the reality, you are able to see the reality. And then our work is done. Now you can call it by any name. As long as you are able to point this reality to other person using those words, right? It is fine. So the major traditions, I would say, would use mind as this activity of imagination, which includes desire, thought, and expectation. And this soul as something, you know, which is the highest activity of the self. Yes. But whenever you are studying something, you know, you have to be careful and see what it is really taking this word mind as or self as, uh, as the soul as. They may have different meaning. They may be pointing to different realities. And this higher activity of the self is the same as natural acceptance. Yes, natural acceptance is one of the you know kind of uh, expressions of this highest activity of the self. That activity of realization. Yes. So that is how we can connect to that highest activity. And good thing is that it is readily available to us. You know, we only have to decide to pay attention. So not that we have to create natural acceptance. The natural acceptance is there. We only have to start paying attention to it. We have to decide that, yes, this is something important. And this can be my guide for my desire, my thought, my expectation. So when I decide to pay attention, I can see this natural acceptance. When I see this natural acceptance, I can take it as a guide for my desire, for my thought, and for my expectation. And this is the way to go about ensuring you know, being in harmony and happiness. So isn't this the same as uh, what is being said uh, in spirituality, in the spiritual traditions. I mean, see, our position is very simple. What we are trying to do is we are trying to work for a system of education that makes us human. So we are basically talking about humanness, right? about what is being human. And now that we find that human being is coexistence of self and body. Self, which is a unit of consciousness, body, which is a unit of material. Therefore, we have to understand both. The self, the consciousness, and the body, the material. Right. And we have to understand the laws of material as well as the laws of consciousness. And this is what we are trying to do. So basically, we are trying to understand this self, this consciousness, the laws with which this consciousness works. Right? So the laws of consciousness over and above the laws of material. And if we have to understand human being, and if we have to be human, right, be with humanness, human conduct, then it is essential for us to understand this consciousness and the laws of consciousness over and above the laws of material. 
and this is what we are trying to do right mm -hmm. now when you try to understand this consciousness and the laws of consciousness right many traditions have done lot of work on it right? so it is not that we are talking about it for the first time no because human beings have been there and they have been searching for you know understanding life and ensuring a fulfilling life they have you know investigated into the details of this consciousness lot of experiments have been done in almost all parts of the world and in the of course it has been done in much more detail so all those traditions are there right and they are they can be guide for us because they have already done so much of research into it so much of experimentation into it so all that is there call them as different systems of thoughts call them as you know different uh, kind of religions call them as different darshans you know philosophies or systems of practices even you know there are practices are there that if you have to really investigate into your consciousness right then there are certain practices available so all those are the you know research and experimentation so they have done the research they have done the you know uh, practice the development and then they have extended it all over you know in the society so they can all be very useful for us as guide mm. yes and spirituality is one part of it so certainly we are you know uh, kind of taking inspiration taking clues you know from all that and trying to understand ourselves and whatever we are able to understand okay with the systematic process of self exploration that is what we are trying to take it to the main stream education so that is our real role Hmm. Um, talking of the activities that you mentioned, this desire, thought, expectation uh, that they are going on all the time. But when I try to think, um, when I try to see these activities, I feel like I am not thinking all the time. I do think sometimes. but um not all the time like when i'm sleeping i'm not thinking and uh, so uh, whether they are really continuous i am not able to see that see this is something which we have to start working on you know we have just started being aware of the self and then the activity of the self so let us work on it you know and probably we'll be able to see but uh, i mean in terms of uh, drawing our attention right? let me ask this question do you dream while sleeping sometimes does dream include thinking i don't know <laughs> no when you are dreaming are you thinking or not thinking perhaps but i am not aware that i am thinking yes so that is the issue that you are not aware of that you are is dreaming you are not aware that you are thinking while dreaming right so now we have to be aware that is the main thing right mm -hmm. and we have to start we have to start becoming aware of our imagination our thinking that is going on when we are awake because even when we are awake most of the time we are not aware we have been thinking that the world outside is so important and therefore we have been paying attention outside and we have not been paying attention to the self we have not been paying to the imagination that is going on in the self now we have to start becoming aware of it when we are awake right 
And when we start paying attention, we'll see that every moment some imagination is going on, some thinking is going on, some desire is going on. When we become aware of it, when we are awake, then slowly we'll start becoming aware of it while we are asleep. Mm. So when you are sleeping, the self is not sleeping. Self is giving rest to the body. So self has decided to give rest to the body. Self is giving rest to the body, but self is active. Self is active, right? Like you are sleeping and somebody comes and calls you by name. You take note of it, isn't it? Mm, yes. Yes. Because you, you are not, you know, uh, kind of sleeping completely. You are giving rest to the body. And you have decided that you have to give rest to the body. So you will not respond to the general inputs. So if a lot of sound is going on, and if a car, if a big truck is going by, making a lot of sound, you don't get up. Right? But if somebody calls you by name, you immediately get up. Now this is happening because your self is not sleeping. But self has decided that I have to give rest to the body, so I will not respond to the general inputs. Right. And therefore, it is not responding. It is giving rest to the body. But somebody comes and says, there is a fire in the house. You immediately jump out of your bed. <laughs> or somebody calls you by name, you respond. That means that imagination is going on, that activity is going on in the self, but it is decided, it has decided to give rest to the body, so it is not responding to the general inputs. <laughs> mm. So now we have to be aware, aware of ourselves, aware of our imagination, aware of this activity taking place in the imagination every moment. When we become aware of every moment, then we can see whether this activity of imagination is going on every moment or not going on every moment. Whether I'm thinking every moment or not thinking every moment. Mm -hmm. So do this while you are awake. And then slowly you will become aware of it when you are asleep also. Mm -hmm. So this is something which we have to work on. So what I'm saying is not giving an answer to your question. But talking about a process through which you can get an answer to your question. Yeah, I can see, um, you know, where that's coming from because a uh, lot of times uh, when I'm sleeping or dreaming and like you're mentioning, if somebody calls the name, then that starts coming in the dream or even like you mentioned that uh, uh, you know we pay attention to something so um, uh, when I was uh, practicing and I used to get night calls I would wake up with the sound of the phone but I wouldn't wake up with so many other things Yes. and probably yeah, I can see that yeah yeah particularly mothers you know <laughs> they if they had a you know, small child sleeping by, then they are so sensitive to this, you know, even a small movement of the child, you know, a very small sound of the chi child. Yes. She will get up. Right? And any big sound <coughs> going on in the house, she will not, you know, respond to it. She can go on sleeping. Mm -hmm. But a small movement from the child, she will wake up. Yes. Yes. Since it's uh, like even in the daytime, like you mentioned, uh, we may not be aware a lot of times <coughs> and it is hard for us to remember what is going on in the imagination. So is there some practice like meditation or something so that we can become aware of this more easily? See, 
we have been talking about this uh, you know right from the beginning simplest thing to do is to take the decision that i have to be aware of myself right i have to be aware of my imagination i have to be aware of my desire my thoughts my expectation now this decision itself is very important if you decide that i want to be aware of myself you will become aware of yourself interestingly if you see each one of us has this capacity to pay attention right and when we pay attention we have the capacity to see we have to the capacity to observe so we have the capacity to pay attention when we pay attention we are able, you know we have the capacity to see to observe and on the basis of that we have the capacity to understand so the main thing is that i have to take the decision to pay attention and now you can see how do we pay attention you are already paying attention right you are paying attention to whatever you consider is important whatever you consider is important you pay attention to it so that is already happening so now you have to understand realize that self is also important the imagination in the self is important desire in the self is important because that is what is going to decide my state of harmony and happiness or otherwise the main thing is this to see that self is also important over and above the body if i can see that then i will decide to pay attention to the self when i decide to pay attention to the self i can become aware of the self so i can be aware of the self the activities of the self in terms of imagination the activity of desire in the self all this i will start being aware you know and when i aware of it and i am paying attention to it i will be able to see it and i will be able to understand it right. <laughs> so this is what we have been saying right from the beginning right and if you take this simple example to explain what i am saying you know like if you are walking on the road okay and you suddenly see a one you know 500 rupees note right what happens does your attention go there yes yes why because you have considered this to be important mm -hmm. so if you see a 500 rupees note not the old one <laughs> one and also a piece of bread right what do you think your attention will go to this 500 rupee note or to the bread the 500 rupee note if there is a cow right mm. its attention will go to the 500 rupee note or to the bread <laughs> to the bread probably yes <laughs> so whatever we consider important important we pay attention to mm. so best thing to do and a simple practice we are suggesting is have this clarity that body is important physical facility is important but self is also important the imagination is also important the desire in the self is also important and therefore i have to pay attention to it therefore i have to become aware of it this decision is what we have to do if we can see that self is important then yes we will start paying attention to the self right we will pay start paying attention to the imagination of the self we will start paying attention to the desire in the self right and all these details then i will go on working so one of the this you know uh, step that i have 
seen or I have this clarity that yes, self is important and therefore I will pay attention to the self. This is what is called as pratyahar. That is, till now I was looking outside. Now I have decided to look into myself. I have decided to look inside. So this is considered to be one of the major steps in any practice. Any practice, you know, which has been uh, kind of worked out in the past, which I was mentioning that you know, these people who felt this need to understand consciousness you know, and they developed many details about how to do this. You know. So many practices were developed. So this step that, okay, body is important, you know, physical things are important, but then self is also important and therefore I have to pay attention to the self. This decision itself is considered to be a very major step. So for example, what you call as pratyahar, pratyahar is, you know, looking for my food inside, not outside. Ahar is the food, right? Mm -hmm. So pratyah is, prati, prati means back, you know, coming to oneself. So I'm looking for my food within myself, this Pratyahar. So if you look at this, you know, Patanjali's you know, description of this eight limbs of yoga, this is the fifth one. The first four is has to do with outside, you know, my behavior with the world outside or my interaction with the world outside, or it has to do with my body, with my breathing and things like that. But that is all related to the physical world or the world outside. Pratyahar is this decision to, you know, be aware of the world inside. This decision to look inside. Mm -hmm. So this is a major step that we are saying. Now, once you are aware, then there are many details that you can work out yourself. Yeah. So basically what you're saying is even practices and all, ultimately this is what we have to do. Yes, yes. And what we are saying is that this can be a very systematic process of deciding to pay attention to the self. Mm. And then looking at the self, you know, looking at the details of what is going on in the self in terms of imagination, in terms of desire, in terms of thought, in terms of expectation in terms of how they are decided this desire, you know, by my preconditionings or by the sensation or by my self verification, you know, based on natural acceptance. All these things can be done very systematically. So I can see myself, what is happening in the self. Then I reflect back, you know, and see how I'm interacting with the body. So what is my interaction with the body? What is my transaction with the body? then I can see what is my transaction with the world outside. So all this can be done systematically. And this is what we are doing in you know, UHV3, the next course on universal human values. We are trying to get into those details, how we can pay attention to ourselves, how we can look at the imagination, how we can look at this desire, thought and expectation, how we can see how these desires are decided in by way of preconditioning or the sensation or natural acceptance. And depending upon how it is decided, what is going to be my state of being, whether I'll be in a state of harmony and happiness or otherwise. All those details we will see you know, as part of that course. In this course, we are you know, kind of preparing the basis, the foundation you know, of all those things. But we are not going into the details much here. We will only introduce certain basic processes which you can start working on and which will prepare the ground for you to get deeper into yourself. Mm. Yes. So when we are looking at the... An important thing that is, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is that all this can be a part of the system of education, you know, system of main education, mainstream education. Mm. Because all this we can talk about in a very systematic manner. Right? Mm. 
the self exploration you know, the self investigation that we are talking about can be a very systematic process okay and which can be introduced in the mainstream education so there is no mystery in it right mm. there is no mystery in it but yes we have to do it step by step we have to do it step by step in fact this is a very interesting thing you know uh, which we must understand that when we are uh, working on the world outside for example we are working on science of material right then we don't have to change we don't have to work on ourselves so we can remain what we are right hmm. on the other hand when you are working on this science of consciousness right you are not out of this you know study of consciousness you are also a consciousness and when you are studying consciousness you are the best example of it so you start studying yourself you start understanding yourself you start seeing how this harmony in the self can be maintained how this happiness and its continuity can be mentioned and maintained now when you are doing it you are also getting transformed hmm you are getting transformed so this is something very important to notice that when you are working on science of material you don't have to transform yourself but when you are working on science of consciousness you can't help you know not transforming yourself you will get transformed or you will transform yourself <laughs> so this difference we have to keep in mind and this is what is desirable right from the beginning we are saying that we have to you know it is we who want to be in a state of continuous happiness and we are not in a state of continuous happiness right. so we have to transform ourselves transform ourselves by way of having right understanding right feeling and this right understanding would mean understanding this harmony at different levels of our existence and when we understand we change ourselves so before i understand the harmony and after i understand the harmony i am a different person so my consciousness has transformed in fact the whole effort is transforming into human consciousness from animal consciousness mm. so this is the difference which we have to understand when we are doing this process and we are trying to look at the imagination is it necessary to see all these separately desire thought expectation because when we try to look it all seems like one thing yeah in fact in the beginning even self and body look same thing no? one thing <laughs> so, <laughs> so so what i am saying is that you know if you are not observing things with fineness with subtlety then everything seem to be one gross you know reality but when you start looking at it with some subtleness you see that it is not just one gross reality you know like it is not just human being it is composed of many things right self and body for example now when you look at the self you know you have something like imagination in the beginning and and this is also you know it is subtle in one sense but it is a gross thing you know lot of things are packed into it when you look at this imagination you will see this imagination com is composed of three different levels of activities of the self and these three different levels of activities are desire thought and expectation that we just were talking about right and when we look at this desire you know desire has to do with what i want to be 
given this desire the thought has to do with the detailing of how to be what i want to be in which is the desire basically and expectation is to do with what i have to do outside in order to be what i want to be so what is the you know out of these three things desire thought and expectation which is working as the basis the desire the thought or the expectation yes. out of these three things desire thought and expectation which was which one is the most fundamental most basic desire because of the desire we do something yes so you have the desire and thought is basically expanding expanding on this desire right mm. and even so is the expectation that means the desire is at the base and it is motivating the thought and expectation so if i have to set certain you know imagination right i have to work with the desire mm. I have to work with the desire. Okay, if my desire is wrong, all my imagination will go wrong. Now, this imagination is a very expanded thing, and if you try to handle this expanded thing, it becomes very difficult. It's like a tree, you know. When it is a seed, it is very simple. You can handle that seed. you can decide whether you have to plant this you know mango tree or plant a bubble tree okay at the level of seed it is very simple you look at the seed decide whether it is worth not worth but once it is planted and it has started germinating and then it has become a plant and then it has become a tree so now you have this all thought and expectation everything filled into it now it's a huge tree now trying to get rid of that tree is a very difficult thing <laughs> and as long as that desire is there if you are trying to truncate these thoughts and expectations it will not work in fact it might grow even more you know even many other trees you see when you prune them they grow much faster neem tree for example So if that desire is sitting there, I see it. Right? Mm. Then all your expansions will go on. Right? All this expansion will go on. So we have to handle that seed, beach. So unless you purify all your seeds, okay, you are likely to run into the risk. of having this imagination again you know on the basis of that seed which is there somewhere sitting you know it may be very dormant mm. but it has that potential so that is how you know why this is you know so many times talk about this nirbij you know, that all my seeds of desire should be you know burnt in the light of knowledge burnt in this sense it should be purified in the light of knowledge mm -hmm. this gyan that the beja that's what is said so you pass this you know all your seeds of desire through this knowledge through your understanding through your natural acceptance and let it get purified if it is in line with the natural acceptance let it be there if it is not do away with it so what is important is you know in response to your question we were saying that if i am not able to see this desire thought and expectation separately then i do not see you know where i have to handle when i am able to see them separately i can see that it is the desire which is the basis and i can handle that desire and it is very possible to evaluate the desire on the basis of natural acceptance 
Hmm. If you took, like, look at the whole imagination, it is difficult to decide, decide on the basis of natural acceptance. But if you look at the desire, right, the feeling, you can always verify it on the basis of your natural acceptance. And that is what we are trying to do. In fact, the proposal that we are making, you can see it has to do with this desire, this feeling. You know. So for example, if I ask you, you know, what is naturally acceptable to you? Nurturing your body or harming your body? Nurturing the body. Nurturing, right. This has to do with the desire. Now, once I have this desire to nurture my body, this feeling of you know, responsibility of nurturing the body, then I will work out the details of how to fulfill this, how to nurture this body, you know. Mm. And one person may decide to eat rice in Chhattisgarh. The other person may decide <laughs> eating wheat in Uttar Pradesh. Right. Now, this is the thought. Mm. Right. And then out of this wheat, we can think of making chapati or making bread or making so many things, you know, upma and all that. Now, these are the details and these details cannot be verified in terms of your natural acceptance. So some people may prefer or like to eat rice. Some other people may like to eat wheat or jar or any such thing. But when you ask this question about whether they want to nurture their body or harm their body, what is their natural acceptance? The answer will always be that they want to nurture their body. Hmm. So this desire, this feeling can be verified on the basis of your natural acceptance. And this is in the seed form. Hmm. So it is important to see them differently, you know, desire, thought, expectation. Because desire is something like seed which we can handle, you know, easily. If you don't handle there and it becomes a tree of imagination, then very difficult to handle it. Yes. Yes. So a lot of work has to be done. I, I think a lot of times we are doing so many things outside without really thinking about all these uh, yes. you know, yes. desire yes. and all those things. A lot of work has to be done. Yes. We have spent 20 years, 25 years trying to understand the science of material. <laughs> right? Now we have to understand the science of consciousness, which is certainly more subtle than the science of material. Because the material, you know, is a very gross thing. This consciousness is a subtle thing. So we need to investigate, you know, we have, need to work on this. I mean, even to understand the science of material, we have spent 25 years and still we don't understand much. When it comes to understanding the science of consciousness, we'll have to be more attentive. We have to be more, you know, rigorous. But this is what I'm, what we are saying, you know. We are saying that if this is made a part of mainstream education, then the child will start investigating into the science of material and science of consciousness as well. And when you start investigating into the science of consciousness or into consciousness, the interesting thing is that you are able to see things much better than you can see them, you know, in the material. Because the self is nearest to yourself. The consciousness is nearest to you. It is you, in fact. So when you start understand, trying, you know, exploring yourself and understanding yourself, you can see that it makes so much of difference in your life. And your self starts, you know, improving, okay. starts progressing. And when the self is progressing, its capacity to see things, observe things, understand things is also increasing. So you can be much faster than you are with this science of material. So therefore, it will be a very good idea, you know, to start working on this science of consciousness, you know, helping the child to start observing this consciousness, you know, understanding this consciousness. And it will make all the difference in the whole process of education. 
And in fact, you know, it should be done as early as possible. People keep asking, why are you doing this course in higher education? <clears throat> Already the children have spent 18 years coming to this professional college. So I say that, you know, somewhere it has to be started. But it is true that it has to be started as early as possible. So, right, you know, from the time of the birth, you know, zero to five years before the child goes to the school, the parents have to work on it, help the child to start exploring within himself or herself. And not only there, you have, to, you know, you can go even beyond, you know. Why not start, you know, <clears throat> from the time of conception when the self associates with the body in the womb of the mother, we may have to probably take care. And then you can also go back and say that, you know, when, why not, when it is not associated with the body, even then something needs to be done. <clears throat> so what we are saying is very simple, that at least we do it in the mainstream education, right? Helping the child to see their themselves to explore within, to investigate into the self, into the imagination of the self, into the desire, thought, and expectation of the self. And if we do it, we have 25 years, you know, with us. At least 20 years we spend, you know, getting education. So by the time we are at the age of 20, we are in the process of getting education, either in the home with the parents, guardians, or in the schools and colleges. Now those 20 years are very valuable and they can be used properly. Yeah, even now the education and the society is setting <clears throat> the tasting of individuals and this, uh, they are setting their expectations or the, the influence is there. And yeah. similarly when you know we are doing things like mathematics and all that, a lot of analyzing abilities uh, enhanced. Yes. So if we start working on the the desire part, the feeling part, which the child is anyway sensitive to. Yes, true. So that can also be done. And beyond that, if they start looking at their natural acceptance from early age. Yes. So there is a and even in this workshop, in the workshop, there is certainly you know that sensitivity is very visible. Yes. Need is visible, sensitivity is visible, change is also visible. Yes, yes. In fact, if you look at these workshops that we conduct, you know, this face-to-face -face workshop that we conduct, we find that if there is a child who is, <laughs> can express himself, you know, so something of the age of 8, 9, 10, you know, like that. And if you are asking any question relating to natural acceptance, that child is first to respond. This grown up takes time because they have a lot of beliefs otherwise, a lot of preconditioning otherwise. But the children don't have, you know, they do not have, they have not developed so many preconditionings. So they are able to respond much faster. Much faster. So if you start with them right in the beginning without corrupting them, it will be much easier for them to pick up and work on themselves. Uh, Namaskar uh, uh, Ganesh ji, uh, a short okay. question. Uh, broadly speaking or informally, can we say that uh, self is equal to imagination or is self something more than imagination? Yeah, self is more than imagination. That is what we are saying. Imagination is a part of it. And one simple thing that we have been talking about is the natural acceptance in the self, which is more than the imagination. I mean, I'm tempted to say that, uh, I mean, a lot of importance to uh, imagination, which is very, very important. I'm almost tempted to say that self is equal to imagination. See, this guidance of imagination, where is it coming from? That is also the part of the self. So we will talk about these higher activities of the self later, not in this course much, you know, 
we will certainly make a mention that what we are calling as realization, what we are calling as understanding. And this natural acceptance is one of the expression of that realization. So that uh, these are the activities of the self, which are the higher activities of the self, and which has the capacity to guide the imagination of the self. So I would say that imagination is a lower part of the activity of the self. But there are higher activities of the self which can properly guide this imagination. And one of the crises that we have today is that we are not aware of the imagination. And we are not aware of this higher activities of the self. Therefore, this imagination is not guided by those higher activities. That is the real problem with human being. In fact, one of the difference between the animal and the human being is essentially this, you know, this right understanding that we are saying is basically these higher activities, you know, pointing towards these higher activities of the self. So unless we move to that higher activity of the self, move to that understanding and realization, right, we do not really transform ourselves. Mm. Yes. So this transformation into a human consciousness takes place only when you move up to that higher you know, activity of the self, work there, and from there start guiding the lower activity of the self, that is imagination. G. Yes. So if you are working only at the level of imagination, you are likely to be influenced by the preconditioning and sensation. Only right. when you are able to work at the level of higher activities of the self, that is at the level of understanding, at the level of realization, then you can properly guide your imagination, guide your desire, guide your feeling. Gee. <clears throat> if you are able to set your feeling right, then your thought, your expectation will also be set in accordance with that right feeling, right desire. And with that, you'll be in a state of harmony within and your behavior also will be harmonious outside your behavior, your work. But all this we have to start looking within, you know, and seeing it for ourselves. Uh, uh, Sir Ganesh Ji was saying that uh, we have to uh, uh, catch the children from zero to five age. I think I had mentioned the same thing in one of the uh, seminars. In a, a seminary, I had told them that uh, we are having so many activities for the uh, Catholic community from the age of five onwards. But we, our children are in front of the, uh, uh, there, front of the TV and front of the uh, whole world, uh, uh, taking all the sensations and taking all the preconditions, preconditioning that are given to them. So they should be caught there. The expectant mothers also have to be uh, uh, brought together they have to be taught, and then only uh, we have we can uh, so transform the society. Thank True. you, sir. True. This is very important. You know, this is very important that this zero to five year, which is a very formative year, you know, major part of our imagination. Yes, sir. Is decided at that level. So we have to be very sensitive, and as you rightly mentioned, that if we want to work for zero to five. Not only that, we have to work with the children, we also have to work with the parents. Yes, sir. And uh, just a minute, sir. And uh, uh, till the, until the age of 15, at least, uh, for the children, parents are the superhuman beings. So they are ready to accept anything that the parents say. So if the yes. parents know things, surely children will learn. Yes. To, they are very much open, you know, they are very inquisitive and, you know, willing to learn, to, to, yes, yes. And as you said, you know, that 
in order to do that what we have to do is to handle the parents yes yes sir. so working with this higher education has one advantage that you are taking yes. care of three types of people first you are taking care of the parents you know yes because yes. ultimately they have to take care yes so usually it should go or this uh, right understanding and right feeling should go to the children through their parents and yes. we should prepare the parents that's one thing second yes. thing is that we should be able to prepare right kind of teachers yes yes so when the children come to the school they should be given the right kind of education by these teachers and then we have to have right kind of policy makers okay yes. who provides you know a right direction to the society so if the all three of them are handled then the child will have this opportunity yeah you know, to go through this process of self development uninterrupted yes. and all these three people are being you know are going through this process of right you know higher education so we thought that this is where we can handle them yes sir yes yes so we should do this at the level of higher education you know very intensively then slowly bring it to the level of secondary primary and you know all this nursery level and bring yes, it for the yes. you know parents so that yes. they can take care of it right from the time of birth and even when the child is in the womb of the mother the mother has to think right kind of things you know the parents the family yes. has to think of right kind of things to provide yes. a conducive environment <laughs> yes true but now we have to work for it you know we have to work on it yes. intensively then it will be possible otherwise we are giving all kind of thing you know in the name of education and as you said that even parents are not very conscious that the child is being fed with so much of unnecessary information or misleading information yes. through channels through tv yes. through internet yes. and so many things and we are not giving the right kind of proposal to the child yes it's true Yeah. Yes. The yes, child Dr. is Sankar. left in the wilderness. Yeah. Afterwards, yes. can't get them back. Thank you, sir. Namaste, sir. Namaste. Namaste. Uh, first of all, I I completely agree with you that uh, we have made this world totally artificial, where the natural acceptance. i would say rather i would feel that it has lost its own you know probably people are not able to understand what exactly it is and when i am listening to you uh, it is really eye opening for me as well uh, my one uh, query was that uh, uh, continuously we are trying to understand uh, about the self in deep uh, where we have uh, many things like our desire expectations uh, consciousness everything is incorporated so can we say that it is the continuous thought process which is uh, we can take it as a self or a part of thought process where desire expectations and uh, every other things is being involved See, the so, essential thing is that we have to understand the self and we have huh. to understand the activities going on in the self ji yes. and this we can do by direct observation yeah once yes. we are able to see this reality of self and the activities of the self then we can call it by any name okay okay that i will leave it for you know people to decide but what is important is that you should be able to observe yourself your consciousness i just so, would like to share one thing that yesterday was uh, your talk was on related to depression and blood pressure and other uh, what we were discussing so my son was also awake and i thought that i will ask him to hear otherwise he never pays any attention to uh, uh, this talk when uh, it is continuously going on so yesterday he sat and he uh, listened the uh, entire uh, faq and talk of yours and you know i could see that he's trying to um, uh you know like uh, take all these things inside him though he did not say much but it yeah. was making a lot of impact on him so mm -hmm. later on uh, after the session uh, got over then we sat together almost for one hour 
and yeah. he also started sharing lot of thing which uh, probably uh, he would not have shared with me otherwise yeah. and i could understand though we know that lot of uh, stress and agitation is going on among the children because of various reason um, but uh, then i mean i was happy that yes he was accepting uh, what we call here natural acceptance and yeah. slowly uh, trying to you know imbibe in himself that uh, this is the right way or uh, this should not be concerned turn into depression or anxiety so uh, yes when we start teaching the children i am sure that they will accept it uh, gladly and probably slowly we will be in a position to change the society along with the family and you correctly said that to start from the higher education and then uh, we can slowly go uh, deeper and deeper with the young children and family thank you so much the way you express it is really uh, uh, i would say that uh, there's no word to express of course uh, i can only express my gratitude towards uh, the uh, the kind of understanding you are sharing with us and knowledge you have so thank you so much sir thank you yes regarding gratitude we keep saying you know the first gratitude has to be for the whole existence which is in harmony Uh-huh. Second, is the whole tradition, you know, people who have been trying to investigate into this harmony, and yes. to be in harmony. Third is this whole team which is working on this to make it a part of uh, whole team education. So I am just a part of the team. So, how electronics and communication engineering professor with doctorate publications, seminars, conferences could develop a mind or inquisitiveness uh, in this area of the life life skills principles human values a totally different domain so you have opened that kind of domain in all the participants that's what i feel sir yes first i am human being you know <laughs> yes <laughs> yes so it is natural for each one of us you know as human being to have inquisitiveness about the human values and the human conduct yes yes only thing is that unfortunately this education system is not nurturing it yes so you seem to be out of you know your discipline yes but if we realize that human being you know has this basic inquisitiveness anyway you know yes to understand the human consciousness the human values the human conduct Yes. then we will nurture it you know in every discipline that yes. will be the foundation so within within in our own field it takes several years to get expertise and it's a continuous learning in the chosen field also by by publication by research and all that it takes several years but it's a totally new domain and complete authority on each and every sentence each and every aspect you, which you could produce here the last 15 years i am listening to you and to add it to this majority of the professors from iisc here in bangalore and a few from iit they are into a different domains i think the mind has developed in that way not only in their chosen field they are into vedas they are, they are into the lectures they are into life skills they are into training the society so they have their mind is different the higher level of mind has developed with continuous Uh, submission of proposals analysis and i mean that gives value to the society that's what i feel sir yeah we can all develop to this you know and i am just trying to place you know these possibilities rather yes. than you know uh, saying this you know uh, with authenticity so maybe many of these things i am still in the process of verifying them but i find them very meaningful and therefore i am sharing and i want everyone to be part of this process of investigation you know exploration yes, yes. true so we can explore together yes but it is worth it yes, yes sir true true thank you sir thank you thank you very much sir what is the sir the, the, the level of 1 and 2 sir kindly kindly uh, said please explain uh, yes. for the yes. details we will talk about it tomorrow sir. you know but let me just mention that you know this one and two sir is what we have been calling as realization and understanding 
you know so these are the higher activities of the self so this so, one is realization and second is understand sir again it is understanding is a natural acceptance at the level of or uh, bright understanding or natural acceptance sir yes one is realization two is understanding which is based on natural acceptance you know this Sir, so that too we have we have covered in this uh, this uh, desire, thought, and expectations, and because natural acceptance and right understanding is there, unless and until that is not there, and we cannot give uh, harmony and peace. Exactly. Exactly. So sir. unless one and two is guiding this imagination, ah, sir, we are in trouble. So we'll talk about this tomorrow. Okay. Yes. could you explain if there is any difference between deciding and selecting it seems the yeah. same i i was describing about this desire thought and expectation you know so i said this desire has to do with you know what i want to be the thought has to be has to do with how to go about becoming what i want to be so if for example if i want to be in relationship you know so this feeling of relationship is what is desire then i am trying to work out the details of how to ensure being in relationship how to ensure this feeling of relationship with the other and and <clears throat> when it comes to expectation when it comes to selecting and testing i am essentially trying to work out what i have to do in the world outside so these are three things and that is you know so when you are saying selecting it is essentially meaning that i am working out what i have to do with the world outside at this point of time so if i have to express my feeling of respect in relationship then i will go and touch the feet of a person who is senior to me to whom i have a you know feeling of uh, reverence or feeling of respect okay. so this is a selecting but when we say deciding it has to do with the thought so it is little higher than this activity of selecting yes okay so selecting is like choosing and deciding to choose is yes choosing a particular act outside mm -hmm. <clears throat> so i may express my feeling of respect by touching the feet i can express my feeling of respect by shaking hand or by touching by giving blessings if somebody is angered to me i can give my blessings if somebody is equal you know of my age my friend i will shake hand with him and if somebody is you know elder than me i touch his feet now this touching feet is an expression of my feeling of respect right mm. so this is what is selecting this is what is choosing an action outside but when it comes to deciding it has to do more with thought so where i am trying to work out the details of how to be or how to ensure the fulfillment of this feeling of relationship with the other and there can be different ways of doing it so i am trying to work out that program work out working out the details so deciding essentially has to do with that and out of this thought i may choose a particular act to be done outside to express this feeling of respect 
so deciding is a much broader term than selecting in fact desire is much broader than this thought and thought is much broader than the selection so i was taking that example yesterday that desire or the feeling is like a seed thought is like stems trunk and the stems <clears throat> and this expectation is like flower you know this leaves and flowers and that is how this whole tree of imagination is there <clears throat> and if i have to be really <clears throat> you know doing something about this imagination then i have to look at this seed and do something with this seed if i do not do anything with the seed and if the seed has gone wrong then working with this thought and selection is not going to help in fact if you look at this you know kind of education today it is largely trying to work at the level of thought and at the level of selection not working at the level of desire in fact it is setting up wrong desires <clears throat> so you want to consume more and more and you are not willing to produce by level by you know your own effort now that means that you are you know somehow setting this desire for exploitation because if you want to consume more and not produce by labor you have to exploit others so in <clears throat> variably we set up a desire a feeling of exploiting others rather than nurturing others and then you you know kind of give give it, giving training how to talk nicely to people you know how to do effective communication and all those things but these are the at the level of thought without handling the things at the level of seed the desire the feeling which which has gone wrong and now however sweet they speak however nicely they speak you know with very good flowery words the outcome is wrong they end up exploiting others because the very seed is gone wrong and we are not in fact even looking at that seed you know we are not taking care of it or i i say it you know uh, uh, more you know kind of in depth i would say that we are setting up the wrong desires wrong feelings true and when people do that um, like you mentioned you know it uh, doesn't have the same effect like if somebody talks with the uh, nice words but the feeling is not right it somehow gets uh, conveyed yeah yeah it get conveyed and you are really uncomfortable with this other yes. person yes you know at the base we have the desire to exploit you you know to <coughs> kind of overpower you and then he is speaking very sweet words you really become very careful of him but you don't know what to do and you are quite confused mm. so at the base of all this there is this profit maximization or maximizing his own gain and then he is talking very sweet Mm-hmm. selectings are very good thought are little you know worse than that and desire is the worst <laughs> mm. in this um um activities we have talked of desire thought expectation as 3 4 and 5 so why have we not put the one and two activities there why is left 
blank. Yeah, we have put that one and two as a number, but we have not filled this, you know, with a very clear purpose. Somebody was asking yesterday this question. <clears throat> so the purpose is very simple. First, we wanted you to, you know, look within and see that this consciousness is there, this self is there, you know. So that was the beginning. Then we said that, look, this self is, you know, having all these activities going on in self. So let us be aware of them. So we talked about imagination, and now you can see something about imagination going on in the self. Then we worked out the details about desire, thought, and expectations which are taking place and these corresponding activities. So slowly we are trying to become aware, aware of ourselves and what is happening in the self. So not only we are able to see that self is there, but we are also able to see that, yes, this is there in terms of these activities, activity of imagination, you know, in general, but in detail, it is activity of desire, thought, and expectation. That is activity of imaging, analyzing, comparing, selecting, testing, all this. But what we are trying to indicate that this is not all that is. You know, there are higher activities of the self. There are higher activities of the self, which we have to investigate further. So by writing this one and two, we have created that space. You know. Right. And by not writing anything on it, right, we are giving you, you know, an opportunity to think, reflect, investigate as to what it is. <clears throat> so that is, that is the purpose. You know. We are going step by step. First, we said that we are not just the body, but coexistence of the self and the body. So that is, you know, that awareness is created within. Then we said that there is this imagination going on in you, which you have to become aware of, which I have to become aware of it. Then we detailed out this, <clears throat> but now we have to go further, deeper into the self and see that these higher activities is one, two. And this three part, the second part of the three is also vacant, the state activity of the three. So all these are also important and we have to investigate further. But if you want a hint of what it is, you know, this natural acceptance that we have been talking about, you know, and which tells me whether this desire I have, this feeling I have at this moment, whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me, right, is coming from this block this higher block, it is coming from there. So we have some clue. We have some clue and we can be aware of it. So number one, which we call as, you know, activity of realization. And number two, what we call as activity of understanding that we will slowly, you know, talk about. But this activity number one, is what is the source of <clears throat> natural acceptance. And this is always there. It is always there. Only thing is that we are not paying attention to it. Mm -hmm. So what we call as inner voice or conscience you know, or the pure observer or many words are given to this. This activity number one, what we are calling as realization that capacity to see the reality directly. That capacity is there in us, right? And whenever we refer to it, we get the right answers. But we are not referring to it by choice. Okay. So we are working mostly at the level of selecting and testing, not even going higher to the level of thinking. Right. analyzing and comparing, not going to the level of feeling, desire. Right. I mean, we are working at these levels, but 
we are not conscious of it we are not aware of it and that is why they are not the major part of our activity of the self but now what we are saying is that we have to be aware of all this but more important than all this is that we are become aware of this you know the highest activity of the self this realization so we'll just briefly introduce this by the end of the course but we will take it up in more detail in the you know, next course as i was mentioning that ehv3 course where we are studying about the human being in much more detail and also about the nature and the existence okay yeah but here we are just creating this you know space for you to start working you know in this self at a deeper level and to begin with we can access our natural acceptance you know which is there intact invariant uncorrupted by our preconditioning so that is the beauty of this you know activity number 1 that it is something which is there which is innate in us which is invariant in us which is uncorrupted by any preconditioning that we have so that is where we can connect to the reality without getting you know colored by our preconditioning hmm. yes. in these activities um, when we say desire is it the same as intention because if i desire something i have the intention to get that so is it the same thing this we will see when we talk about this you know harmony in family and we talk about relationship and relationship we talk about feelings and one of the feeling is that feeling of trust so when we are talking about this feeling of trust we will be able to you know, look deep in detail into this you know difference between the intention and the desire so but let me briefly you know kind of explain what we will see there in detail is that when we are saying intention we are saying what is our natural acceptance for example what is our natural acceptance you know in respect to other human being do we want to be in a feeling of relationship or with a feeling of opposition feeling of relationship feeling of relationship so this is what we are calling as intention so this feeling of relationship this feeling of trust this feeling of respect is what we are calling as intention so ultimately this is what each one of us intend deep within mm -hmm. this is what we intend deep within so in that sense intention of each one of us is same right here for example is you know, intention is to be with a feeling of relationship but we are not able to do it you know or out of our preconditioning we have feeling of relationship with some people feeling of opposition with some people right? now this feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition right depending upon our preconditioning depending upon situations and all that is what is desire so we oppose people because we have this desire to you know oppose people we have a feeling of opposition but this feeling of opposition is not naturally acceptable so this feeling of opposition is a desire but which is not the intention basically it is not the intention we are doing it under some influence not under your our natural acceptance so now you can see desire is something which can be you know under the guidance of my our own natural acceptance or it can be under the influence of outside the other human being or the physical world or the sensations so somebody disrespected me and therefore i am in a feeling of opposition with him this feeling of opposition is not something which is naturally acceptable but it has come in to me because i was not aware right and i did not like that feeling of disrespect so i have this feeling of opposition with him 
but the moment i have feeling of opposition in me i start suffering because this feeling is not naturally acceptable to me right and therefore i am in contradiction within and therefore i am in a state of unhappiness within so i do not want it to be there but it is there because i am not taking the guidance of my natural acceptance but i am being influenced by you know the behavior of the other person so this is the difference between the desire and the intention the intention is going to be same it is as per the accordant is as per the guidance from the natural acceptance and it is same for all of us desire may be coming from it in you know natural acceptance or it may be coming from the influence from outside so it has lot of possibilities it is not definite but this we will discuss quite in detail you know when we talk about this trust trust as a feeling in the relationship with other human being so can we say that um, we have the intention to be happy but i may think of happiness as getting a car somebody else may think of happiness as getting a house and that would be a desire yeah true true that is what we started with that ultimately is not that we have too many desires we have very definite desire and that desire is to be happy and prosperous but we are not able to see this you know directly and what we end up is you know this lot of you know preconditioning lot of beliefs around that if you have enough physical facility you will be happy mm. so you can maintain the continuity of happiness by way of accumulating physical facility now once we assume this and make that as our desire right we have no way to find out how much physical facility will and you know essentially ensure continuity of happiness so we go on accumulating right mm. and the moment we think in terms of accumulating we find that we cannot produce it ourselves right so we have to exploit others if we have to exploit it other exploit others then we have to have this feeling of opposition now the moment i have feeling of opposition i am in a state of unhappiness so we just go through a lot of unhappiness with expectation to get continuity of happiness by having physical facility you know accumulating physical facility without knowing how much so we somehow get this sense that it is unlimited you know, unlimited amount of physical facility has to be accumulated so now we are stuck we want to have continuity of happiness that is happiness every moment and some of we are got into a situation where we are in a state of unhappiness you know, most of the moments so you want to get a promotion in your college or in your job right so you are in competition with everyone you are in opposition with everyone right deep inside that is what is working so you are uncomfortable with everyone right with that feeling of competition that feeling of opposition you are always you know having a feeling which is not in line with your natural acceptance so you are in contradiction within and therefore you are in a state of unhappiness within and with that state of unhappiness you are expecting that sometime you will get the promotion <laughs> okay you will get a prof- become a professor or a director or a vice chancellor you know, or chairman in ugc and then you will be happy <laughs> that is why you know you find everybody so unhappy and so complaining you go to meet your head you know he is so uncomfortable so reactive and you almost believe that you know when you go to higher post you become reactive that's not the case problem is that this fellow is in a position with so many people around 
all the time he is facing this unhappy contradiction and unhappiness. So he is not shouting at you, he is shouting at himself. So we want to be happy and uh, we are only causing our own unhappiness, but we are thinking somebody else is responsible for our unhappiness. Yes. yes. Now he wants everybody, faculty member under him to, you know, do his job and whatever job is assigned. And the purpose is that, you know, by getting all this work done, he will be able to please the director. And if he is able to please the director, he will get a higher post. You become a dean. So when you are not doing the job assigned to you, you think that you are against him or her. In fact, I have seen these academic institutions today have become a kind of tough place to be. So much of opposition. The faculty members are spending more than half of their energy and time to oppose each other. I mean, those who are in academies would know. And the situation in the industry and all is not much different. Politics, anyway, you see all that is going on. <clears throat> People are opposing each other at the cost of the society, at the cost of the nation. I remember we had this, uh, you know, <clears throat> a workshop for this National Council members of Bhutan. You know. uh, at the end of this workshop, they uh, all said that, you know, we should not call it an opposition party. You know. So we should call it, you know, a government in waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, they are top supplement, you know, they are complementary party, not party in opposition. So even where the names which we have suggested, you know. <laughs> yes. So there is a ruling party and there is an opposition party. So what kind of mentality will it create? So instead of, this is what we are doing. With the hope to be happy, we are becoming unhappy. So this intention and desire, in that sense, <clears throat> are two different things. The desire can be you know, equal to intention if it is guided by natural acceptance. Mm -hmm. Yes, but today, if you see, most of the time it is not. Mm. And this other term that is mentioned here, competence, is it the same as skill? Like when I say I am a competent doctor, it means that I know my subject well. So is that the same thing in competence? I mean, at one level it is same as skill. But, <clears throat> you know, you see what is happening is that we have limited our perception to the world of material. So everything we are trying to see at the level of world of material or at the level of world outside. We have not, you know, seen this world within. So if you just look at it outside, yes, competence and skill will turn out to be the same thing. But what you do outside, you know, is just a tip of the iceberg that is going on inside. So before you speak a word to someone, you do a lot of thinking around inside, you know. So you have this feeling at the base, right? then you have this thought going on continuously, then you have this lot of these selections being made, and you finally express just one word or few words, you know. So this whole of this thing going on inside is competence. And what comes out of it outside is very small thing, tip of the iceberg. You know. See, suppose you are, you know, thinking of taking revenge. This example I keep taking with, because I think it's a very good example. 
Now you think of taking revenge from someone for two hours, and at the end of two hours, you drop the idea. Right? Mm. Yes, this is your competence. For two hours, you have suffered. You, know, you have made yourself unhappy. Outside, nothing has come, so no skill. <laughs> yes. Right. But if you decided to shout at the other, after two hours you shouted at the other, that is your skill, which is just the tip of the iceberg. So 90%, 99% goes inside, some 1% comes out. And we are considering only that as a skill. What we are saying is competence means all this 99% or 99% plus 1% outside. Isn't it? Mm. And these two hours were important for you, you know. You suffered unhappiness, which was not necessary. And the other person does not even know that you have done so much of labor for him. What we are saying is that if we had this feeling of relationship for him, instead of feeling of opposition, these two hours, you know, I would have been, you know, in harmony and happiness. Because anyway, I did not do anything outside. Nothing reached to him. So it is my matter to be happy or unhappy with whatever state of mind I have. So I could as well be happy. Hmm. So competence means all this, my imagination that is going on, my desire, thought and expectation. And if you go a little deeper, all that innocent scar, that acceptance I have, that is my competence. So <laughs> like desire could be um, um, in line or same as intention if it is um, in line with the natural acceptance. So how would we relate competence with this? Yes. So if my desire is in accordance with my natural acceptance, then I have the competence to be in a state of harmony and happiness. As simple as that. Okay. If my desire is not in line with my natural acceptance, then I have the competence to be unhappy. <laughs> be in contradiction and unhappiness. So this world outside is not really, you know, kind of causing so much of unhappiness as we are creating our own unhappiness. So it's a matter of our own desire, a matter of our own feeling. If our feeling goes wrong, if our desire goes wrong, then we are in a state of contradiction and unhappiness within, irregardless of what is the condition outside. So this is what I was mentioning, that if you are having this feeling of opposition, if you have a feeling of exploiting others, this feeling is not naturally acceptable to you. So by having this feeling, you are in a state of contradiction and unhappiness. Now it does not matter whether you are successful in exploiting others outside or not successful. One thing is very sure, you are in a state of contradiction and unhappiness. So this, this is what is happening to most of us. This so, is how, is eh? so how much of my imagination is um, in line with my natural acceptance? That is my competence? Yes, true. Mm. true. That is the real indicator of the competence. So when we say competence, it is a desire which is deciding the competence along with the thought and expectation, those detailing, right? So all my imagination which is based on my feeling, my desire, is what is my competence. Competence to be happy or unhappy. Because that is what really matters. That's our ultimate aim. To be in a state of continuous happiness. So am I competent to be in a state of continuous happiness or I'm not, in, I'm not competent to be in a state of 
harmonious happiness the skill outside is just one small part of it i the self is spending major part with itself i am spending major part with my own imagination sometime i express it outside and that sometime may be even less than 1% yeah i was taking that example if you remember that i was talking to one of my friend's son and he very arrogantly said you know look uncle let me tell you very clearly that when i get a good fresh breakfast i feel happy and i look for a better lunch and when i get a better lunch i feel happy and i don't want to compromise with it i said that is fine i am not wanting to take away your this happiness at the time of breakfast and at the time of lunch what i am concerned is that this 3 hours in between right lunch breakfast and lunch do you want to be happy he said yes my concern is are you happy during this 3 hours what is happening and i gave him this example that suppose you are thinking of taking revenge some one or one of your friend and then 2 hours you worked out for it or 3 hours you worked on it and then you dropped the idea what happened to you were you happy and happy he said unhappy so i said my concern is that you know this 3 hours in between every moment of it what is your competence to be happy or unhappy so the breakfast makes you happy the lunch makes you happy but as you are right you do not have this source of happiness within you you don't have that competence hmm. so that is the real competence so you can see our intention is good we all want to be in a feeling of with the feeling of relationship but competence is not matching that intention which essentially means that our desire is not in line with our natural acceptance with our intention mm. thank you and this is an issue which we have to settle ourselves within ourselves not outside true and if we have not settled it we are responsible So in that sense, we are responsible for our happiness and unhappiness. This we will see as we go further. We will see that we are responsible for our happiness. We are responsible for our unhappiness. uh there are these terms that are used today about conscious mind subconscious mind super conscious mind um, could you tell us little bit about that yeah i mean the background i will men- uh, mention that you know these words when we use have lot of history and culture you know so to really give the meaning of words is a very uh, a kind of complicated thing but anyway we have to talk about it so i i will uh, mention you know the sense in which which is used you know presently in general but there are very different you know uses of it but one possible use which is there in general is what i will you know place so what is being said is that when we are aware of what is going on in this self it is being conscious so i am conscious of myself i am conscious of what is going on in this self <laughs> second there are many things going on in this self which i am not aware right. so things which are going on in this self and of which i am not aware we are calling it subconscious so when you say it is there in my subconscious mind it means that something is going on in this self 
but I'm not aware of it. So it is not somewhere else, it is in the self only, but I'm not aware of it. So this is subconscious. The third thing that we were talking about, you know, this one and two. Okay. So there is this possibility, this guidance available from higher activity of the self and natural acceptance being one of them. Right. But I'm not aware of it or I'm not taking this as a guidance for my imagination, for my desire, thought and expectation. So when I become aware of this and I start taking guidance of this, you know, one and two, right? That is being super conscious. So being guided by this activity of realization, activity of understanding. So we have to be aware of this activity of realization activity of understanding. We have to ensure these activities, higher activities. And then we have to make sure that our imagination is all under the guidance of this. Then it is called superconscious. So it is the same self which is conscious, subconscious or superconscious. These three states are possible. And what we are suggesting is that at least we come out of this subconscious state become conscious of whatever is happening in the self. Then look up to these higher activities of the self. Right. Work there. Be conscious of it. Mm. And then make that as the guide for your desire, your thought, your expectation. Mm. Then we'll be in a state of super consciousness. So we have to come out of this subconscious, be at the level of conscious, and finally move to this level of subconscious, superconsciousness. And this is what we are saying as you know, to be in a state of you know, with human consciousness. So only when we are when we are in a state of superconscious, with superconsciousness, we are in a state of human consciousness. Otherwise, in most of our subconscious, what we have done, you know, to live as an animal, that is there. And we are not able to see this and evaluate this and set it right. So we are living with animal consciousness. Mm. And it's true what you're saying that, you know, things, we only look at things outside. So like in medicine, we say, you know, unconscious when we are not talking, we are not, you know, no activity outside. And when, when we are, uh, I mean, we don't think about all that is going on inside that can also be, you know, looked at as consciousness or conscious, being conscious. In fact, this is at another thing, this unconscious is at another, you know, this is conscious, subconscious and superconscious we are talking. Unconscious means I am not aware of the world outside. Mm. Self is not aware of the world outside. It is either not finding interesting or it is finding it very painful. So it gives away. It becomes unconscious by choice. <laughs> so this is also interesting, you know. This getting unconscious at the level of self, it is by choice. When you think, when you see that the body, you know, this sensation in the body is very painful and you cannot, you know, there is no point bearing with it. So you withdraw. Withdraw your, you know, interaction with the body, transaction with the body. 
so now there is no problem for you the body may be in pain having problem but you are not reading that pain that sensation that is being unconscious mm. so when you are saying unconscious it has to do with my interaction with the body when we are saying conscious subconscious and superconscious it has to do with my state of the self mm. in fact all this can be better understood when we understand this self and body as two you know the basic reality and their coexistence the transaction in between the two otherwise so difficult to understand these words you know they are defined in a very vague vague manner yes <laughs> true and even these activities you know this much clarity is not there so that's why i think a lot of times these words get all mixed up you know in psychology today without understanding this self and body as two different entity and without investigating into them deeper you know the psychology becomes so confusing mm. you know? i mean you do not really understand what is being said <clears throat> yeah yeah i mean freud freud for example would say you know that we are guided by this id and what is that ego and super ego mm. and now what is this id and ego and super ego very difficult to understand mm. now we can understand with this clarity of self and body as being two things and self having these different levels of activities right mm. so when we are working only at the level of this selecting and testing that is your id when you are working at the level of imagination but you consider yourself to be in isolation from others separate from others that is ego when you are able to see the relationship harmony and coexistence everywhere in the whole existence and then you are you know being with this feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence that is the super ego and there now there is no more ego the super consciousness so there is no more ego because you don't have that sense of identification sense of isolation as being separate you are in relationship so you go essentially means that as long as you see yourself in isolation from others that is the ego yes Um, but this is all i am you know just suggesting as a you know <clears throat> set of proposals to be investigated so we have to work with all these you know these are not the answers which you can just take it in terms of words and you know believe it these are just suggestions right suggestions you know given to you as proposals for which you have to do, do the self verification so you have to work on all this and this is you know uh, i would keep reminding that all this is a very you know kind of sensitive kind of thing unless we work on it ourselves right these answers will have no meaning and if we pass on to the students without understanding them ourselves and being with them ourselves then we will not be able to convey much so we have to 
you know, look at it. We have to go through the process and transform ourselves. And then only, you know, it will make sense to the students when we respond. In fact, this is interesting, you know. Uh, the basic difference between science of material and science of consciousness is that when you are talking about science of material, you don't have to change. You don't have to transform yourself. You can talk about this world of material very comfortably. But when you are talking about science of consciousness, right, you are talking about yourself. Right? And all that is being said about this self, I have to see in myself. And when I try to see in myself, I get transformed. So that self-transformation is very important. And that's what we said in the first talk, you know. That lecture four, we talked first because we have to be very clear that now we are not talking about transforming things outside. We are talking about the self-transformation, transformation of the consciousness, transformation of the self from animal consciousness to human consciousness. That is what we said in the first session. Of this FAQ also, and this is what we do in the, you know, course also. That the first session is about making us see that the issue is not just transforming things outside, but it is an issue of transforming our own consciousness, our own self, from animal consciousness to human consciousness. So this is the difference between the science of material and science of consciousness. So the moment you try to work on science of consciousness, which we are not doing today, you know, in the name of science or technology or education or whatever it is, you know, when you talk about this science of consciousness, you have to transform yourself because you are talking about yourself and you have to see all those things in the self. And when you see all those things in the self, you realize that your choice is to go with the desire, with the feeling which are naturally acceptable, because that is what makes you, you know, in a state of harmony and happiness. So you will try get transformed in the process. So what we are doing, what we are giving in the name of answers to this question that you are asking, is not basically the ready-made answers. We are trying to describe some process, some way, in which you can investigate into yourself and understand yourself. Once you understand yourself, you will transform yourself. With that transformation, you will try to, you know, you, you will be able to see what we are saying. You know. Then you will really get the answer. Not otherwise. So that is why we have been saying that the whole purpose of this workshop, this course, is to you know, start, initiate this process of self-exploration, self-investigation in you. It is not just to, you know, transfer certain set of, you know, assumptions or certain set of you know, uh, facts or set of, you know, statement about reality. But it is about initiating this process of dialogue within your own self. Yes. So understanding this subconscious, conscious, superconscious, unconscious, you have to work with yourself. Yes. Yeah, only then these words will make sense. Yes. Can you also mention something about uh, what we mean when we say preconditioning? Like we say our desires are unlimited. Is that a preconditioning or is that true? Is that reality? Yeah. <clears throat> we are saying preconditioning, you know, when our imagination, our desire, thought, and expectations are being dictated by the world outside.
for example <clears throat> you are asked you know by your parents by your teachers by your you know the friends that you have to come first in the class right and somewhere you pick up that you have to come first in the class right so i want to be first in the class now mm -hmm. this is a desire which has come to you right and this is something which is prevailing in the society and you have accepted this without self verification without knowing so this is what we are calling as preconditioning we are saying preconditioning is something which is prevailing in this society and which we accept without verification or without knowing if only we had asked ourselves that when i am saying coming first in the class what does it mean does it mean that i understand what is being you know explained in the class or whatever it, you know is being communicated in the class or does it mean that i get better marks from others so is it something definite or is it something relative so when i am saying i understand what is being explained it is definite everybody can understand right and they will understand the same thing but if i am saying you know getting better marks then it means that it is relative relative to to other you know students in the class if it is relative then i am stuck right so now it is with respect to the other in relation to the other and if you see that if i have to come first in the class can everybody come first in the class no no so if i am wanting to first come first in the class will i have a feeling of relationship with the other students in the class or feeling of opposition with other students in the class feeling of opposition because i will want to get ahead yes so now i am kind of, you know kind of uh, caught in this preconditioning of coming first in the class without verifying that it will lead to you know feeling of opposition lead to state of contradiction and unhappiness within mm. yes so now you can see that as far as this preconditioning is concerned it is not that the preconditioning will always be against the reality against this natural acceptance there are both the possibilities it can be in accordance with the reality or it is it can be in against the reality or different from the reality right that you have to verify that you have to verify given any preconditioning does it correspond to the reality or not that you have to verify for that you have to investigate within you have to know the reality and then you can see whether it is you know a reality or it is not a reality so this is what we have said you know as far as the particular preconditioning is concerned this conditioning that you are talking about it does not correspond to a reality because desires if we understand properly are definite and that is continuity of happiness and prosperity right this we have tried to study so we don't have you know unlimited desires undefined desires the desires are definite and that desire is for continuity of happiness and prosperity 
right? Mm. And when we understand this happiness and prosperity, then we can see that the amount of physical facility that is required for ensuring prosperity is limited and can be identified. So we don't need a limited amount of physical facility that we can see, right? Mm. So desires are defined, they are definite. And desires related to the physical facility, you know, if we see, we see that this physical facility required is required in a limited quantity. I mean, I don't need unlimited amount of food. You know, if I do, you know, bread fills my stomach, then I will need two bread, not five breads or ten breads or hundred breads. Right? Mm-hmm. That will only make my body unhappy, I mean, make my body unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So this is one thing. And second thing is that once we are able to see that desires are not unlimited, the need of physical facility can be defined. Then we can see that though resources are limited, if you look at the nature, from there, where, from where we get these you know, physical things, the resources are limited, certainly. Mm-hmm. But when you compare it with what you need, the available resources are much more than what you need. Right? So there is so much available in nature, in abundance, and you have the capacity to produce. So though this availability is limited, but as compared to your need of physical facility, it is far more than what is required. So there is a possibility of prosperity in nature. So that example which we have been mentioned, that even now we are producing six times what is required for all the people to eat. Right. Far more than what is required. So now this right kind of you know thing would be that human beings have definite desires and the definite desire is to be in a state of continuous happiness and prosperity. Number two, when we think in terms of prosperity, it is in terms of having this feeling of having more than what is required as physical facility. Then we can see that the required amount of physical facility is quite defined. You can talk about the quantity of it. It is not required in an unlimited quantity. And number four, the availability of resources in the nature is far more than what is required. Mm -hmm. It is far more than what is required. So there is an abundance. And therefore, there is a possibility of prosperity for everyone. Even now, we are producing far more than what is required. But we have not identified our need of physical facility. We are not in a state of harmony and happiness by way of our understanding and our feeling. Right? So the problem is that of understanding, that of feeling, that of relationship. Right? And that is why we are not able to ensure prosperity even with six times what is required for all of us. Because we do not have the right understanding, we do not have the right feeling of relationship. Therefore, we are thinking in terms of exploitation and not in terms of nurturing others. So even now, the problem is not because of the resources, lack of physical resources, but because of lack of the right relationship, right understanding. But if we really have this right understanding and right feeling, and that is how we construct this society, the education system, then we will see that we can produce far more than what we are producing today. And we may need much less consumption that we have today. I mean, each one of us can see how many clothes we have accumulated. In fact, many of us have accumulated so many clothes that many of them you bought and not used ever. (laughs) Yes, you buy them, keep them in your trunk or wardrobe or whatever it is, you know. And after 10 years or after one year, you think that, oh, this is an old fashioned. So you just part away. (laughs) 
If many of us do that, mm. you can find out for yourself how many clothes you have accumulated, and are you really going to use them in your lifetime? And still, you are thinking that you have to buy more because this people keep telling you, you know, with, through advertisement that whatever you have is useless. Buy what is there in the you know, mall. <laughs> And as soon as it comes to your hand, you know, it is useless. It is out of fashion. Mm -hmm. You do not have that right understanding and right feeling. And that capacity to decide how much physical facility is really required for you. So you spend so much of time earning money for it, then you spend so much of time buying it, so much time trying to preserve it. And you realize that it was not needed. So it was all wastage of time and effort. Mm. So this is not a reality. This Resources are limited and desires are unlimited. Right? This resources are limited is true, is a reality. Desires are unlimited is not a reality. And therefore, it is put to, together, which essentially means that everybody is bound to be deprived, is also not a reality. I mean, the basic argument is this that. Resources are limited, desires are unlimited. So each one of us is bound to be deprived because mm -hmm. we can never fulfill that desire. <coughs> what we are saying, desires are definite, they can never be fulfilled. Right? The desire of happiness has to do with my own understanding and feeling. The desire of prosperity has to do with my understanding, my feeling, and also with the physical facility. But when it comes to physical facility, I can see that what I require is in limited amount. And there is a possibility of far more than what I require. So there is a possibility of prosperity. So with right understanding, we can see that our desires are definite. And there is all provision for the fulfillment of this desire of continuous happiness and prosperity. As far as need for physical facility is concerned, there is abundance in the nature. We were doing this calculation, you know, that in India, on an average, you know, a family of 10 people have as four acres of land. And in two acres of land, you can grow whatever is required for all the 10 people in the family. In fact, much more than that. So even this land available is twice what is required to feed all the people. And there also, you know, this is calculation is done with this one crop, you know, at a time, not the multi-crop, multi-variety, all those are not taken into consideration. If you take those into consideration, you can grow much more. Yes. There are so many preconditionings. It's true that we don't even think about. We think that that is what is our desire. We don't really look into it in more detail. Yes. Yes. We don't even see that they are not our desire. And mm -hmm. also many of these statements about reality, we take it as preconditioning. No, which is not a reality, it's just a belief. Mm -hmm. Pavlov has this theory of conditioning, mm -hmm. you know, where with about the dog and salivation. And so, how does it apply to us? Because we have based so much on this theory. Yeah, in fact, now what we should do, you know, 
we have to have this clarity about self and the body and the interaction between the two and the you know this this self ensuring continuity of happiness through right understanding right feeling right thought and body for body we need some physical facility to nurture the body to protect the body to ensure right utilization of the body if i have this clarity then many of these theories can be understood many of these theories can be understood properly so this pavlov's theory for example is saying that you can condition the mind hmm. by giving some input from outside some physical input you can condition the mind the major experiments have been conducted on animals but then it is generalized that it will work for human being as well hmm. in all condition so now if you look at this pavlov theory what we can see in terms of in in case of human being is that as we, as long as we identify ourselves as the body and if the condition of our self or the status of our self is decided by the status of the body right so the self is under the influence of the body then pavlov theory of conditioning will hold good mm. so this is what i have to say in part 1 So as long as you are living with animal consciousness, the Pavlov theory will help. You know, will work for the human being also. It is working for animal. It will also work for human being living with animal consciousness. Right. But so this is part one of my answer. Part two is. if we can understand the self and the body separately and if the self has right understanding and right feeling then the self is in a self organized condition a state of you know satantrata and it responds to any input from the body and not react so what Paolo is saying is you know this conditioning is based on the reaction reaction to the input from outside you know so when something is coming in contact with the body there is some sensation the self is reading that sensation on the basis of that reading the sensation it is forming its views you know okay it is forming its views so this is something this is something which self is doing in reaction to what is happening at the level of body mm-hmm. now if self has this right understanding and right feeling then the self will respond and not react so we were talking about this yesterday you know that if there is a extreme pain in the body right what will i do will i start shouting will i start crying or i will do something to take care of this you know problem in the body so if i start crying if i start shouting this is a reaction if i see that there is a pain extreme pain in the body so i take it as an information with that information i conclude that there is some problem in the body so i try to identify what is the problem in the body and then i try to work out what can be done right to rectify that that will be response hmm right now if the self is in this condition then you can see that whatever you are input you are giving to the self through the body right the self will not get conditioned to it self will take this input as a sense of responsibility towards the body towards the health of the body 
and would do whatever has to be done you know, for the body rather than getting influenced by it. Right? Mm. So you are saying, <coughs> you are giving, you know, you, this person will press a button and there will be electric shock. Right? So next time it will not, you know, kind of touch that thing, you know, which is giving shock. True. But look at the mother, you know. When the child, you know, the small child, you know, is wetting this, you know, uh, bed, right, in the night, cold night. Okay. Now it has become very cold. The bed sheet has, you know, is now wet and therefore it is cold than, than it was before. Now what will the mother do? Will mother keep herself on the dry side and the child on the wet side or otherwise? So while the mother is conscious of the health of the, her body, but she is also conscious and concerned about the health of the child. Mm. And this feeling of care for the child, you know, helps her to decide that she has to be on the wet side and put this child on the dry side. So your conditioning theory will not work. <laughs> so when it becomes an issue of understanding and feeling, then it will decide on the basis of this understanding and feeling and not on the basis of just the sensation. Of course, the mother will try to keep both of them in the dry side. But if there is no choice, she will prefer to sleep on the wet side you know, because she has that care, feeling of care for the child. Mm. Yes. And more interesting than that, you can see that the self, you know, with right understanding and right feeling, it can articulate that some conditioning is being created. So rather than getting conditioned, it will try to come out of it. And not only he will try to come out himself, you know, we will also alarm others that don't get into this conditioning. So this is what we are trying to do, you know, that people are getting conditioned in this society. Now through this whole process, we are trying to alarm them that, you know, don't get conditioned. Don't work with this Pablo theory under this conditioning. Society is conditioning you, whether knowingly or unknowingly, that I will keep the question open. But yes, we can articulate that this conditioning is being created and this is putting us in trouble. It's not right to do. So we can articulate it and we don't get influenced by it. Not only that, we try to facilitate others to also look into it and come out of this conditioning. So for a human being with animal consciousness, Paolo theory will work. With human being with human consciousness, right? This person can see beyond this theory of conditioning and the process of conditioning. Mm -hmm. And this will be true for many of these, you know, theories that we talk about, you know, human beings. not discard them, but improve upon them. For example, I would say this Paolo theory, when I'm talking about Paolo theory, I will say that this is a very interesting observation which is being done for animals. And it also applies for human being living with animal consciousness. However, for human being living with human consciousness, we have to understand it, you know, and study things fresh and come to meaningful conclusions. So this is how, what I would say about Pablo's theory, you know, whenever I'm teaching this course on Pablo's theories of conditioning. Yeah, actually, because these theories are there and it's uh, so much accepted in society, so much of human behavior is uh, being sort of uh, looked at through these theories only, that 
concept of understanding and feeling and all that doesn't come in at all. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Similarly, I was just mentioning about this Freudian, you know, concept mm -hmm. of motivation. So I would not just go by what is written in the textbooks. You know, I would understand that this is what you know. Uh, it means that motivation comes from id or ego or super ego. And <clears throat> what it means is this, which I explained, mm -hmm. and it will make a better sense to people. You know. People can look within and find out that yes, this is how it is working. So rather than remembering what is being said, we can experience with and with authenticity we can talk about it. And and it will be helpful to transform my own personality, my own status of the self. Yes. Yes. So we have to talk about human psychology, not just the psychology. Sir, what's this Pablo's theory you are mentioning? Pablo's theory says that you can create conditioning in the mind of the, you know, animals or human being. One example I will give you, you know, like they conducted an experiment that if a rat comes and, you know, places some kind of you know, a platform, then it gets something to eat. Something falls from the top, you know, and he eats that. So this, this rat, you know, he will come next time and place that. Okay. And then again, he gets something to eat. So every time it feels hungry, you know, it comes and presses that and something falls from the top and you know it is you know eating now this is a conditioning which is being created in the mind of the rat i mean they will not call it mind but i am calling it mind they will call it rat so this conditioning is created in the mind of the rat so every time you know it will keep coming and pressing that and then other experiment is that if he comes and touches this you know platform he gets a shock. So he will now start avoiding touching that, you know. <clears throat> so this is the theory of conditioning that you can create this conditioning in the mind of the rat, you know, about this touching the platform. Now, what we think that this will work for human being also. So if somebody does something as you want him to do, you will give reward. Okay. If he's doing something not in accordance with you or otherwise, then you will give him a punishment. And by giving this reward and punishment, you can condition him. Right. And this is what we are doing today in the name of governance, in the name of management. Right? This is what we are trying to do. That through punish, reward and punishment, we are trying to control the people. Right. Is that clear? Sure, sure, sure. So because we are working, we, we, we are we are behaving human beings in the same manner. Same manner. But the problem is that this does not work with human beings. Mm -hmm. You know, this man will be all around you and praising you and all that, you know. You are so great and all that. And he will not do what you want him to do. Okay. But he knows that by praising you in front of you, he can get his work done. Okay. So he is doing different kind of conditioning on you. Okay. And your management fails. So most of these people at the top have this coterie around him, them, this kitchen cabinet. Okay. You are not doing much, but you are controlling this man, you know, on the top. Uh -huh. So your theory is finished. Uh -huh. Okay, so they are smarter than you. It's smarter than Paolo, you know, they are creating different kind of conditioning. So all this goes on. With human being, it does not work. Right. Yes. 
and at least you know, if it is working, human beings are not in a state of harmony and happiness with each other, and that is important. Oh, 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 oh. and that is the final point. In human being is right understanding and right feeling, and right thought, which will make this, you know, they, which will ensure happiness in them, and which will also ensure doing right kind of behavior and work and participation in the larger order. So that is a better way of doing things. So instead of working with reward and punishment, with reward, we have to work with right understanding and right feeling. That will be fulfilling for me and fulfilling for others also. That is true. So, for example, you are experimenting with this idea, you know, how to interact with your driver. Mm -hmm. When you are able to see yourself, your family member, you are also able to see that this driver is, you know, a human being like me. Mm -hmm. And I can behave with him with right feelings. Mm -hmm. And when I'm behaving with him with right feeling, he responds much better than what he does when I'm shouting at him. Mm. When I'm trying and to it, mm. reward and punishment. Mm. Mm. And that response is also continuous. Yes. This is what I'm saying, that when you start working with your consciousness, science of consciousness, you will get transformed. And because you are getting transformed, your relationship with your driver mm -hmm. is changing. So now you don't treat that I'm a vice chancellor, so my priorities are more important, you know. And this driver is a driver, therefore, you know, he doesn't have to be given leave for four days because my work will suffer. You think that you are important, your family members are important, but this man, you know, as a driver is also important as a human being. So if you consider him as a human being, and you have this feeling for him, then he will also develop that feeling for you. Sometimes. And he will respond much better than react. So here then Paolo theory, you know, conditioning, you don't have to apply. Because you know, ultimately it does not work for him. At least it does not work for human being with human consciousness. And we are interested in having human, being, human beings with human consciousness and not otherwise. Because if we have human beings with animal consciousness and if they are very effective, you know, efficient in delivering the you know, goods, I think it will not serve the purpose. They will remain unhappy within and they will make others unhappy in one context or the other. This too. I think whenever I mean or whenever I say the word emotional and mentally strong, I think after attending this program, I think I am meaning the self, sir, though I didn't understand on that occasion, but now I am putting the question, sir. Uh, does it mean that I have to, the self has to be strong, the self has to be emotionally strong and mentally strong, uh, whether that would be appropriate, sir? Yes, true. In fact, when you say emotional, it means that we have to have the right feelings, right desires, yes, right? feeling in accordance with relationship, harmony, and coexistence. And when you say right determination, it is having the right thought. Oh. The thought of living with relationship, harmony, and coexistence. And this is all going to happen at the level of self. Oh. Oh. Right? So, yes, it is making the self stronger. And how do we make yourself stronger? By having the right feeling, right thought. Mm -hmm. And if we have the right feeling and right thought, we are in a state of harmony and happiness within. Uh -huh. And we are also able to live in harmony and you know happiness with happiness with others. Mm -hmm. So we'll be harm in harmony within and harmony with outside. Mm -hmm. 
at least from my, our side we will try to be in harmony with the world outside yes sir uh, that is that is the meaning of being emotion you know having this strong emotion and strong you know kind of uh, determination okay. so determination has to do with your thought and the emotion have to do with your desire your feeling and all this is at the level of self self and no external condition stops me from doing this mm 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 yes true is spiritual it is part of the self when you say intellectual it is part of the self when you say emotional it is part of the self when you say you know reactional physical, mental uh, it is part of the self when you say physical then it is part of the body and the physical things okay okay so the and when you say social it means it has to do with your relationship with other human being mm mm which is again you know the important part of this relationship is in the self self in the feeling mm mm so first four things spiritual intellectual emotional you know and mental all these are part of the self okay sir okay sir only that physical is you know has to do with body, body. and the physical right okay. when you come to society uh major part of it has to do with relationship uh uh yes sir and this relationship has to do with the feeling and that feeling is in the self self so now you can see how important is self and body yes and one important thing is that when something is related to the self uh then it is more of a more a matter of education and self development rather than physical facility okay okay sir so first four things we can directly work on the self through education mm mm, mm, -mm. Right? or through our own self development it does not require much physical facility yes sir the fifth one that is physical requires physical facility mm the sixth one that society mm a major part of it has to do with relationship yes sir right which has to do with the feeling in self self so there again we have to work at the level of self self uh yes sir yes so you can see that physical facility is not that important you know one of the six things you know uh, or uh. one and a half things one and a half out of the six things for society you have relationship and also you have a system you know so their physical facility is important partly partly relationship is important important but the major part is relationship relationship yes sir yes. i must have the feeling to it connect with others sir yes yes otherwise you may have lot of internet facility mm if you do not have the feeling you can mm. communicate at least relationship cannot be established yes sir yes sir true sir yes true can we think of something uh, more about it ki uh, so that we can transcend into uh, human consciousness from animal consciousness yeah that is what we have been talking about in fact when we initiated this uh, morning session it was about those exercise 1 and 2 you know that we were doing you know in terms of observing the self and understanding the self and all that so we are essentially talking about the process but it is a slow process it takes time it takes time so we are in fact as i said I, right now also that we are talking about the process how we can evolve how can we can how we can transform from animal consciousness to human consciousness but there is a process you know and this takes time it takes time if we are working sincerely you know even then it takes time but we are essentially talking about the process only and what uh, you know like we are studying into some of these theories and all because you know if we take those theories as preconditioning then it does not show us the possibility of further you know uh, kind of uh, transformation or further evolution in that sense we are trying to analyze them so we are talking about the process only which through which we each one of us has to go you know 
Each one of us has to work through this process. I am myself working through the process. And it is taking me time. At least I have been doing it, you know. If not the full of it, the part of it, you know, for the last 40 years, if I remember more than 40 years. Yes. Thank you, sir. Uh, at least for in my case, I can clearly say with evidence that my self-development in all aspects, whether what I think, how I feel, so-called moods, my productivity, relationship, all these aspects, and there is a tremendous development just by paying attention to what is going on inside and following that seven steps that are explained in the exercise one and two before this FAQ such sessions happen. They are available in YouTube also. That's what I uh, have done. Uh, so why do we have this term uh, used that a human being is a split personality? Yeah, <laughs> this is a very uh, important question, I would say. <clears throat> what we call a schizophrenic. Yes, yes. Schizophrenic means a human being with a split personality. Right. <clears throat> and normally what is meant by schizophrenic is that you have two sets of this desire, you know, uh, desires, thoughts. So for one set of people, we have one set of desires, one set of thoughts. For another set of people, we have different sets. Right? But if you look at this, uh, you know, uh, little deeply, you would see that, you know, what we have been talking about right from the beginning. Gee. That what is our natural acceptance and what is our desire, the feeling, when they are not in harmony, then we are in a condition of split personality. So our natural acceptance is for something else and our desire is for something else. Mm. So they are not in harmony. They are in contradiction. And that is the basic reason for split personality. That is the reason for split personality. So what we said is that what we really want to be and what we are. Yeah. What we really want to be is what is our natural acceptance. What we are is what is our set of desires, thoughts and expectations. So this figure, uh, if you see, you know, this diagram, it is essentially talking about that. It is talking about this lower block B2 that has to do with our desire, thought and expectation. And that is what we are today. Right? But what is naturally acceptable to us, what is our natural acceptance may be same or different. So as long as my desire is in line with my natural acceptance, I am in a state of harmony within and therefore in a state of happiness within. The moment I have a desire, I have a feeling which is not in line with my natural acceptance, I am in a state of contradiction within. I am split. So my inner self is saying something else and this lower self is saying something else. Mm. And I'm split. And as long as I'm split, as long as I'm in contradiction within, I'm in a state of unhappiness within. In fact, if you see, in this sense, this happiness, unhappiness is a good indicator of whether I'm an integrated personality or a split personality. Mm. When I'm an integrated personality, my feelings my desires are in line with my natural acceptance. So I'm in harmony within, I'm an integrated personality. The moment my desire, my feeling goes, you know, heavy, you know, and it is in contradiction with my natural acceptance, then I'm in contradiction within. I'm in a state of 
you know, split personality. I am in a state of unhappiness. So this is what we have been talking about right from the beginning. That we have to make a choice <clears throat> whether we have to live with an split personality or we have to live with an integrated personality. Uh, <clears throat> in split personality would mean that I have set of desires, thought and expectations which are not in line with my natural acceptance. G. An integrated personality would mean that I have at this moment at least a set of desire, thought and expectations which are in line with my natural acceptance. And that is indicated by my state of unhappiness and happiness. So whenever I am in a state of split personality, I am, you know, it is indicated in terms of my unhappiness. Whenever I have this integrated personality, this being in harmony within, I am in a state of happiness within. So this happiness, unhappiness is basically an indicator of whether it is a split personality or an integrated personality. So now we will see this happiness as an indicator, right? Indicator of my state of being. If my state of being is in harmony, it's an integrated state, I have, you know, it will indicate it by state of happiness. If my <coughs> state of the self is split, it is in contradiction within, it will be indicated by the state of unhappiness. Yes. So this is very important, in fact. And so the interesting schizophrenic essentially means this. And all through our course, we will see, you know, what we are essentially talking about is how we can get rid of this schizophrenic state of our being, split personality of our being. And how we can be an integrated personality. How can we you know, be in a you know, harmonious uh, state of being. And that is indicated by happiness. Uh, there was one question that uh, my imagination or what I am is what I am. Can't I change my natural acceptance? Do it, try. <laughs> 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 this is the interesting thing, you know, this nature, this existence has this built-in, you know, process that you have a lot of choice, but that choice can be made within the boundary. So you have, to cho you have the choice to have your own set of desire, thought and expectation. Nobody is stopping you. But you do not have the choice <clears throat> that you can be in harmony within, right? Without being in line with this relationship, harmony, and coexistence, which is the basic law of existence. Because we have the natural acceptance for relationship, harmony, and coexistence. And you can't do anything about it. But you can always try. That choice is there. You can try. And be unhappy, be a split personality, be a schizophrenic personality. That choice is there. But you will not, you know, want to be in a that state of, <clears throat> you know, split state of schizophrenia, state of contradiction, state of unhappiness. So you will automatically start thinking for a way out. <sighs> but we have tried all this, you know. The whole civilizations have tried this. That why should I listen to my inner voice? Why should I care for this natural acceptance? I will be what I am and be happy. So fine, you know, we can try, we can try for you know our whole lifetime. The civilizations can try it for thousands of years. And they have done it. And they have realized that it is not working. But we can do the experiment what we are saying. We are giving all the choice to everybody. <laughs> Try out. 
so when we are saying this is just a proposal this is what it means that you can try out all possibilities and this is one possibility <clears throat> Yes, I think today um, we are realizing that the choices that we are making are making lot of difference in our life. Because uh, if I look from the health perspective, also um, <clears throat> there was a recent, maybe a couple of years back, a Harvard study which said that uh, more than ninety some percentage, I, be, I forget the exact number, but between ninety ninety five perhaps. More than this many um, diseases that people come to see doctors for are uh, related to stress, and uh, most doctors hardly more than not more than two or three percent of the doctors actually talk about stress. And uh, if we look at the root of the problem, stress begins there itself, where that contradiction is there between the imagination and the um, natural acceptance. so yes. at the root level that itself is stress and we are doing this to ourselves so that gives an idea of how our imagination has gone astray and how yeah. much of this contradiction is there in most of us see the interesting thing is that all these surveys you know they are that conducted and if the results are not in favor of the present civilization they are not in fact publicized <laughs> so all the reports should be publicized mm -hmm. and i would say that we should convey this i mean we should you know conduct this survey that whether this education system today whether this whole civilization today is educating people the next generation or the present generation for living in harmony relationship and coexistence or it is educating just otherwise and if we are educating otherwise and we are facilitating otherwise we are bound to be a split personality we are bound to be a schizophrenic personality and therefore unhappiness is our destiny so we should find out how many people are feeling happy how many people are feeling prosperous how many people are feeling healthy even you know at the level of body let us do the survey and if large number of people are facing this if not all the people <coughs> then this is a big question which we have to think and whether it was done in the previous civilizations or not that is not a real issue for us the real issue is that okay we are not able to reach where we want to reach we want to be happy we want to be prosperous right we want to be healthy at the level of physical at the level of physical body how that we want and we have not been able to reach anywhere near to it maybe it is becoming worse i mean you can always say that you know because this are such survey were not then uh, done in the past so we don't know what happened really to the society how many people were suffering from depression and things like that which is true i mean Such survey was not done, but I am saying that today we can do this survey and realize that okay, we have not reached where we want to reach. So let us do something about it. Forget about the old civilization; they were successful and successful, but we are not successful. This is very clear. So let us start thinking fresh. That is all we are saying. True. even now we are not thinking about the consciousness when we are saying stress we are looking at it outside we are not really looking yes. at it yes yes what you rightly said that majority of these problems are psychosomatic and what is this psycho we are not even working on it systematically so what that we are saying that okay this self is there you know this psycho is there and we are suffering from this problem of psycho not problem of physics only So do something for physics, but do something for this psycho also, for this consciousness also. Try to understand. At, at least we start start exploring. Give a place in this whole scheme of study, you know, 
whole scheme of investigation, whole scheme of education. And interesting thing is that when you start working on it, I mean, many of us have realized just that, you know, little investigation into it makes so much of, you know, difference in our life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this we all must be realizing that it has made so much of difference in our life just by starting this investigation into consciousness. Mm -hmm. We might not have been able to solve all the problems. It will certainly take time. But many problems must have been you know, just resolved. And we thought that the problem was outside. But the problem was inside. And we were insisting that no, no, the things should be solved outside. Now we realize that, okay, this problem is there inside. There may be problem outside also. But at least I can start solving the problem inside. And if I start doing it, it makes so much of difference. True. Yes. Is natural acceptance the same as right understanding? And how can I make sure that my imagination is now being motivated by natural acceptance. Yeah, so there are two, I mean, questions. I yes. can respond to them one by one. What we are saying is that there is something, you know, within us, in this self, in this consciousness, which is innate, which is an integral part of this self, this consciousness. And this is innate, it is invariant, it is uncorrupted by our preconditioning. So whatever be the preconditioning which is promoted in the society, in the education system, in our family, right? that does not corrupt this innate thing in us, in each one of us. And we have been taking this example that we might be having feeling of relationship and feeling of opposition, right? A mix of it that we have looked into. And our whole you know, set of preconditionings keep reinforcing this. When we say struggle for survival, survival of the fittest, are we promoting relationship, feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? So we are promoting this feeling of opposition. But with all this preconditioning over 50 years, 40 years, right? at least 20 years of education, keeps promoting this and reinforcing this. But if you ask yourself what is naturally acceptable to you, the feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition? Feeling of relationship. Feeling of relationship, right. And if you ask a young child, he will respond much faster than we will do because <laughs> our conditioning is much more than that of the child. But even the grown-ups, if you give them little time and they try to sort out all their past conditionings, ultimately they say that it is the feeling of relationship. So this natural acceptance is something which is there as an integral part of our being. It is something which is innate, something which is invariant. It is something which is uncorrupted by all our preconditionings. And this is one thing that we are trying to investigate into and find out. In a sense, <clears throat> we have found that we have natural acceptance for relationship feeling of relationship, feeling of harmony, feeling of coexistence, and not otherwise. So this is something which is there in us as an integral part, as an innate thing. And that this we have to start looking into ourselves. 
and see that it is there. Right. So this is one thing that we are saying. Second thing we are saying is that if we can see this natural acceptance, which is invariant in us, innate in us, then let us make this as the guide for our desire, for our thought, for our expectation. Okay. So if our desire or feeling, whatever you call it, and our thought and our expectations are in line with this natural acceptance, with this feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, then we are in a state of harmony within and a state of happiness within. And if I can ensure this in continuity, I can ensure continuity of happiness within myself. Continuity of this harmonious state within myself. Continuity of this integrated personality within myself. This is what we are saying in essence. Now, <clears throat> if we are clear about that, then now we can see what is this right understanding. So this right understanding is basically what I can see on the basis of my own process of self-verification which is primarily based on this natural acceptance, number one, but which is also based on our experiential validation. Right. So we are seeing like this proposal, you know, that in relationship, feeling of respect, feeling of trust is natural. If I place this proposal, you can ask yourself on the basis of your natural acceptance, whether the feeling of respect is naturally acceptable or feeling of disrespect is naturally acceptable. So this is the primary verification. But then I can also check that if I behave with other human being with a feeling of respect, does it lead to mutual happiness? So this is second part of the self-verification. So now when I verify these two things, one that feeling of respect is naturally acceptable to me in relationship. And second that when I behave with other human beings with a feeling of respect, it leads to mutual happiness. Then I can see that yes, this is the way to be. This is the way to be in relationship, be with a feeling of respect. Now this is what is called as right understanding. That I am able to see the reality as it is. Right. Previously, maybe I thought that, you know, I can dominate over the people. Right. I can uh, kind of rule over the people. And in the process, I can certainly disrespect them. Otherwise, what is the point of ruling for the other? So we thought that, yes, Feeling of respect is okay, feeling of disrespect is also okay. And most of the people, you know, when you dominate them, then only they go in line with you. Otherwise, they will oppose or they will dominate. So this feeling would have been there. And with that, we have, would have been trying you know, to dominate people, to rule over people. The whole history is full of that. In fact, what we write in the name of history is only this history of domination. Of ruling. So now we realize we have this clarity that yes, in reality, what really works in relationship is the feeling of respect and not otherwise. This is what we are calling as right understanding. So right understanding is born out of my own self-investigation, self-verification, self-exploration. Right. And if you look at this, ultimately what it means is that this pure observer that is there you know, in each one of us, and that is from where this natural acceptance is coming. Right. If we start looking from there, if we move up to that, you know, and we start looking from there, 
then we can see the reality in its completeness. Right. So when we are able to see the reality in its completeness, then this is what we are calling as right understanding. So if you remember when we were talking about these words, meaning, reality, and reality in its completeness. Presently, most of us are busy with the words. We don't even care for the meaning. Then some people start caring for the meaning that what does it imply? What does it you know, indicate to? What particular aspect of reality it is talking about? That is meaning. Then we can get concerned about what this reality is that is being indicated by these words. But more deeper than that, you know, we can be interested in seeing the reality in its completeness. So when you are looking at that, you know, from that level of pure observer, which is there in each, you know, for each one of us, right, and which is providing this answer to our question about natural acceptance. If we start working there, then we can see the reality in its completeness, with all its relationship with the whole existence, with the nature. So that ultimately is what is right understanding. But for us to begin with, right understanding would mean that I am able to, <coughs> you know, verify things, investigate things, and see for myself, you know, what it is on the basis of my own natural acceptance and on the basis of my experiential validation in terms of my behavior in work, leading to mutual fulfillment. So this is what is natural acceptance and the right understanding born out of it. Right. <clears throat> now, this second question, you know, which is a kind of different category of question I would play, that how do I know, how can I be sure that my imagination is motivated by my natural acceptance? It is very simple. Only thing is that you have to be open to yourself, right? Don't kind of make it an ego. Just keep asking this question. Am I comfortable within? Am I in harmony within? Am I in a state of happiness within? If you are in harmony, if you are comfortable within, if you are in harmony within, you are in a state of happiness within, then very simple. You are Imagination is guided by natural acceptance. If it is otherwise, that means there is contradiction within, which means that your feeling at this moment, your desire at this moment is not in line with your natural acceptance. So this answer you can always get. You only have to be honest to yourself, you know, open to yourself. Right? and keep asking, and you keep getting the answer. In fact, even if you don't ask, you keep getting the answer, <laughs> right? You are not willing to listen, right? You start diverting yourself. Mm. So all these diversions, you know, on the basis of eating, you know, on the basis of listening to loud music or going somewhere, all this is, you know, even taking to drugs, alcohol, all these are the divergence because somewhere, you know, you can see that that is contradiction. There is disharmony. Right? I'm uncomfortable with it. So you want to run away from that state. So you take to alcohol, you take to good car, you know, you take to so many drugs and so many things, you know, you keep eating so many things, you know, just to divert yourself. So this is, you don't even have to really, you know, look and see it. It is just coming out and you are trying to run away from it. So what I would say is that face yourself. Whenever there is contradiction within, there is unhappiness within, discomfort within, face, look at it, be aware of it. And then you will realize that, yes, you have a feeling which is not in line with your natural acceptance. You have a desire which is not in line with your natural acceptance. So I keep quoting this, you know, this uh, example, I mean, whether 
it happened historically or not, I mean, it's not that important. I mean, I would even take it as an example. So instead of saying Alexander, I would say there is one per there was one person. In. And most of us are like that. So you know, whether historically it happened or not, but the story is very important. And the story says that this Alexander, when he came to India, he was told by his, you know, a guide when he was coming from his place that India, you know, you have this people who are very knowledgeable, the sadhus, the rishis, and you must meet them. So he came to meet one of these people and in, during the dialogue, he said that I want your blessings. And he said, what for? So Alexander said that I have come all the way to, you know, win this whole world and rule over this world. So this person said that I'm not interested in it. When he insisted, this Alexander insisted, he said, look, you have not been able to win over your one small desire. One small desire of winning over the world. So if you are not able to win over even this small desire of yours, how do you think that you will win over all the people on earth? Now this is the question that, you know, <clears throat> many traditions have been asking. And we also have to ask this question to ourselves. That we are out to win the world, people in the world, and we are not able to win ourselves. We are not able to see that, yes, there is so much of contradiction within, so much of discomfort within, so much of unhappiness within. We are not able to set this in order. And we want to rule over the whole world. So this question, how do I know that my imaginations are motivated by my natural acceptance is a very simple, has a very simple answer. Look within, be aware of yourself. See whether you are in a state of comfort within, harmony within, happiness within, or otherwise. And you will get the answer. And not only you will get the answer to this question, you will also get the solution. That here is this natural acceptance in me, which I can see. And all that I have to do is to set, make sure that my feeling at this moment is in line with my natural acceptance. And that's all. The moment I have the feeling which is in accordance with my natural acceptance, I'm comfortable within, I'm in a state of harmony within, I'm in a state of happiness within. And that is all that I have to do. I don't have to try to climb up the mountain for it. So those who climbed up the mountain, climbed up the Himalaya, you know, when they were restless within, they climbed up. When they got this peace, that harmony, that comfort within, right, they came down. They came down to share with other people. Yes. So this natural acceptance is not something you have to import. It is there. This pure observer, the inner self, is not something you have to import. It is there. Only thing is that you have to start facing it. And you start listening to the you know, guidance coming from there. And, and ultimately, that, is this, you know, that becomes the center of your being. That becomes the center of your being. From there, you start operating. That is the ultimate height you have to you know, climb. And it is there as an integral part. So the children can see it much you know, clearer than us because we have a lot of preconditionings now, clouds we have created. 
So they have little less cloud, cloud. Yeah. Yes. When we did this exercise on the list of desires, yeah. we found that most of uh, the the desires were being motivated by preconditioning and sensation. Yeah. So uh, that makes us understand the need for exploring into the natural acceptance and also to check what kind of preconditionings. We have um, yes. any practice we can do to make this better. This process. Yeah, let me first appreciate. You know that this is a very good exercise, you know? mm -hmm. very revealing exercise. Right, and I am uh, sure that all of you must have gone through it, but I can just repeat. This exercise has to do with making a list of your desires. You think that you have unlimited desires, which is fine. So make a list of it. Just keep listing down whatever you, you, know, you thought is your desire. It might sound very funny, very awkward, but it is okay. Start listing. And when you have listed it, there are many, you know, sub exercises corresponding to this. One of the exercises that now you ask yourself, you know, desire by desire, looking at your list. So desire number one, is it based on my natural acceptance? Or is it based on my preconditioning? Or based on my liking for a particular sensation? For example, when I say I want to good, I mean, eat very delicious food, or I want to visit a restaurant, or some particular place you have heard of, very tasty food. So you can ask this question, you know, that this desire to eat in that restaurant. Of course, it is not a desire, it is an expectation, but fine, you know. Okay, let us presume for the time being that this is a desire, part of your imagination. That, uh, where does it come from? Is it your natural acceptance? Or is it your preconditioning? Is it your sensation? Where it is coming from? So you might have heard from someone that that restaurant is very you know, good and it makes very tasty food. And that is how you have developed this desire. So it has come through your preconditioning. So like that, you can you know, start asking this question, whether this particular desire is coming from preconditioning, sensation, or natural acceptance. And this will reveal a lot of things. It will reveal a lot of things that most of our desires are today governed by or dictated by this preconditioning or sensation. <laughs> so this is very important <coughs> to explore. And another interesting thing that will happen is that when you start exploring and you start seeing that these are not coming from natural acceptance, right? you can also see that many of the problems that is caused within and outside is because of this. And therefore, you start you know, evaluating these desires based on preconditioning or sensation and many of them you get rid of very naturally. So all that will happen, you know, and you will start taking to feelings which are naturally acceptable, you know. So that kind of things will happen. But one thing we can see that, yes, it is very important, very important to explore into our own you know, imagination, our feeling, our desire, and then verify whether it is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me. So this is very important exercise to do. Now the question, next question is that if this is very important exercise to do, how do we go about? Is there some practice you know, okay, which can be useful? Yes, we have been talking about this 
and this practice is very simple you know and we are saying it time and again that the simplest thing to do is to be aware of it aware of yourself be aware of your imagination right be aware of your natural acceptance in your imagination be aware of your desire your feeling particularly because that is like a seed right now when you are able to see the desires the feeling you know which is providing the you know seed for this imagination now ask this question back whether this desire this feeling is in line with my natural acceptance or it is not in line with my natural acceptance okay when i ask this i can see what is my natural acceptance i can see what is my desire my feeling at this moment i can see whether it is in line with my natural acceptance or not in line with my natural acceptance i can also see that whenever it is in line with my natural acceptance it is leading to a state of harmony and happiness whenever it is in contradiction with my natural acceptance i am in a state of disharmony contradiction and unhappiness so all this i can see right so all this is part of the practice very simple practice and when i start doing it i suddenly realize that now many times i am able to make sure that my feeling is in line with my natural acceptance and not otherwise and those are the moments when i am in harmony and i am in a state of happiness so if i can do this i can ensure happiness within right in regard of whether the conditions outside have changed or not changed if the conditions outside may remain the same but i have changed within i have changed within right i am in a state of harmony and happiness at least at those moments okay when i am able to ensure a feeling a desire which is in line with my natural acceptance so now i have a clue i have a clue of how i can make myself happy so the final clue is very simple at every moment right i am making sure that the desires the feeling that i have at this moment is in line with my natural acceptance and not otherwise if i can do it every moment i can be sure that yes at this moment of time my feeling my desire is in line with my natural acceptance and if i can do that i will be in a state of harmony and happiness and if i can do every moment this then i can be in a state of harmony happiness in continuity in regard of what is the situation outside so this is basically the practice that we have to do very simple practice so i have listed down here number 1 being aware of the imagination going on in the self particularly the feeling the desire number 2 verifying whether this desire this feeling is naturally acceptable to me or not number 3 whether it leads to harmony and happiness within or otherwise verifying that the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence is naturally acceptable to me and not the feeling of opposition disharmony or struggle and then the last thing that we said to ensure that the desire the feeling i have at this moment is in accordance with the feeling of relationship harmony and coexistence which is naturally acceptable to me so this is the practice we have to do in fact now if you look back the whole course that we are talking about is essentially this right all that we are talking about you know in this morning session is effect use is in a sense this this five steps that we have mentioned here you know it can be made more you know seven steps or 17 steps all that can be done you know you may can make it little more finer 
or a little more grosser. That number of steps may change. But this is what we are essentially trying to do. And this is the practice that we have to do. And you can see that most of this practice is at the level of self, right? Yes. So when we are saying happiness can be ensured by ensuring right understanding and right feeling in the self, which is the first session that we talked about, right? Yes. Is the essence of what we are saying all through. And that is what is being described as a process, as a practice here. But as I said that the steps, the number of steps is not significant. What is being communicated through these steps is important. And you can try doing it with five steps or seven steps or 17 steps or two steps, one step. Depends upon your state of being. But this is what essentially we have to do. And it will be interesting, you know, if you work on it and see for ourselves how it works. And then we can cross-check. In fact, what we have been doing in the name of exercise one and exercise two, that is how this morning session was started on 6th of June. We started with exercise one, which is which has to do with the self. And in that exercise one, in a sense, what we were doing is what we have mentioned in five steps here. There, of course, we made it a little finer and we were doing it in seven steps. But here we have explained it in five steps. But you can you know, decide how many steps you require for your state of being. So if you remember, exercise one was to, you know, observing the self by the self. And exercise two was observing the self, you know, the, so, observing the body and the interaction with the body by the self. So step exercise one is what is, you know, in essence, these five things that we have talked about here. Mm -hmm. Yes. One question is that when I'm reading something, I start thinking of many other things. I can't uh, keep focusing on what I have to read. So how can we increase our focus? See, this is all problem of the self. No? It is not there are distractions outside. No? This is one thing that we have to be clear. That our attention goes somewhere else. Right? I start thinking of many things. It is not because of the diversion from outside. There is some problem within. And if you look at this problem within, try to understand it, then we can see that our attention keeps going to things which we feel is important. Right. Mm. So whatever we consider important, our attention keeps going there. So basically the issue is that we have to decide what is important for me at this point of time. What is important for me at this point of time? And if there are many things that are important, then I will have to set up a priority among them. Right. If I am able to set up this priority among these, you know, important things, 
then my attention will be focused on the thing which is assigned the highest priority at this moment of time. So this is what I have to do. I have to see what is important for me. And if there are many things which are important, then what is the priority? At this moment of time, which particular thing has the highest priority? If I can decide that, then my attention will be that with that particular thing. The next moment, if I am able to decide that, yes, this is what I have to continue with, then I will continue with that, paying attention to it. <laughs> what is happening is that when I am paying attention to one thing on the basis of my decision of priority, next moment, you know, I think that the other thing is important, more important than this. So my attention goes there. Right. Mm -hmm. For example, you are studying and you know, you smell that something, you know, coming from the kitchen, very tasty, very good smell. Now, what do you think is that that is more important than this, <laughs> what you are studying? So your priority has changed. So you have started giving more attention to that smell coming from the kitchen. And that priority had set just a second before to read, you know, it changed. So your attention goes there. Then you suddenly recall that you know, playing, you to go and play in the field. <clears throat> that becomes more important for you. So you start thinking of that rather than studying. Okay. And interestingly, when you are playing, you just suddenly recall that you have to study. <laughs> oh, your priority has changed. Okay. So in the study table, you think of the field. And when you are in the field, you think of the study table. And that's how it you know, keeps vacillating. And you're not comfortable in either place. <laughs> that is why we are saying, you know, when we said we have to understand the harmony at all levels of our being, <clears throat> it was sounding too much. You know? starting from the self to family to society to nature to existence you know what have i to do with this whole nature this existence so big right but now we can understand that it is important that i should be able to understand the whole expanse of my being of my concern things which are important and once i am aware of all that understanding all that then i have to sort out this priority that given all this and my relationship with all of them, okay, my coexistence with all of them, my harmony with all of them, what is the priority at this moment? If I'm able to sort out that, then I will be able to focus my attention where I have decided to focus. Because now then there is nothing outside my you know, perception of things you know, things which are important and things I am related to. And, you know, what is the priority of this importance of within, you know, among these things. Then I can focus my attention where I think, you know, I have this highest priority. So if I have to share with you for these two hours, or I can make this priority that sharing with you is the most important thing for me to do. That is my priority at this moment of time for the next two hours. And if I can make this clear, this priority clear, my attention will be there. You know, listening to what you are saying, listening to your questions, you know, looking within myself, you know, trying to look at the answers. When I see the answers, I share it with you. you know, and I always keep track that, yes, when I'm sharing something, I'm sharing it as a proposal. And my purpose is to help you start, you know, this process of exploration within yourself. So I'm not trying to give my answers only and not caring for whether it becomes your answer or not, whether it initiates this process of exploration within you or not. 
so all that i have to be very aware of you know every moment i can if i i mean i can do this if i have this clarity about this whole thing you know, because there are so many other things around which i am related to and which are important but if i am able to set up this priority see this priority and then set up this priority then yes i am able to be with you for 2 hours every day in the morning and we can make a meaningful kind of sharing i think that every moment that is a very big challenge i think lot of times you know lot of new year resolutions are made and then we yes. forget about them <laughs> during the year so moment uh, not even moment i mean uh, you know the priority is set a list is made and then keeping track every moment that is the challenge yes so this decision has to be made not new year decision but new moment decision <laughs> yes it is very interesting you know if you start working with the self all these things will come so interesting to work with the self till now we have been trying to work with the you know gross things material things so you get bored of it but when you start working with the self it is so creative so everything every moment something new is happening and if i can see that you know if i can make sure that everything that is happening you know next second which is new is in line with something which is eternal and that is what we are saying you know being with ever present so what is ever present i should be able to understand and every moment i you know if i can be with that ever present then i am comfortable within and what is ever present is this relationship harmony and coexistence so if i can see that relationship harmony and coexistence and if i can see that this is what is naturally acceptable to me and if i can be with this ever present then i am always in harmony within and the state of happiness within in fact i i was thinking that i am thinking about the past only when there is some uh, feeling of guilt or something you know that i should have done this but didn't do this or i try to recall something which was a happy moment because i am not happy with the you know present whatever is happening yes. and similarly i am thinking of the future some apprehension or something you know planning because what i'm doing in the present is not so comfortable yes and that if i can understand this uh, um, relationship part at least then it makes a whole lot of difference yes true in fact what i am doing at this moment number 1 i may not be comfortable with it that is one reason second reason is that at this moment i might be comfortable with it but i am not sure of its continuity yes that is why we are saying being with present is not enough being with ever present is what is necessary exactly so something that will continue that i have to understand and i have to be with that something which is continuous so i can be assured of the continuity yes and this is one fundamental question with many of these traditions have been asking you know that if we want continuity of harmony and happiness then the major question becomes you know what are the things which have continuity and what is are the what are the things which do not have continuity yes and what do not have continuity cannot be the basis for my continuity of harmony and happiness so this what they call as nitya nitya vivek you know so what is continuous and what is not continuous 
that discrimination, that wisdom I have to have. And if I have that wisdom, then I will invest myself for what is, you know, for something which is, which has continuity or something which does not have continuity. Yeah, which has continuity. Which has continuity. So when we are trying to work with what has continuity, it is called abhyas. And when we are trying to get rid of this, you know, our past association with, you know, working with this, you know, what has, does not have continuity, and we were trying to work for continuity out of that, we have to have the vairagya for that. So what we have to practice is to be with this, which has continuity. And what we have to practice is to, you know, get rid of that past conditioning where we thought that we can get continuity out of something which does not have continuity. Indeed. Yes. Speaking of Vairagya, you know, um, in tradition, it is also said that we must get rid of desires to be happy. So what do you uh, feel about that? Is yeah, that the is way? Issue. That is exactly the issue. What is being said is that we must have desire related to these things which are continuous in nature. Because they can give you continuity. And you should get rid of those desires which relates to getting the continuity out of things which do not have continuity. This is the simple meaning of what they have been trying to you know, share with all ways in means. So which we are saying in a modified way that we should have the right desire and we should not have the wrong desires. Which, in other words, we are saying we should have the feelings which are in accordance with our natural acceptance and should not have the feelings which are not in accordance of our natural acceptance. So it is not saying that don't have feelings. <laughs> it is saying that have feelings which are naturally acceptable to you. And what is naturally acceptable to you is this relationship, harmony and coexistence, which is there in existence already. <laughs> and this is what is naturally acceptable to us. So they are saying that, okay, we have to have this feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. Right? And this is what is called the feeling of love. And then we have to think in terms of how to share this feeling, you know, this, how to express this feeling. You know, that is thought, that is your compassion. So in the tradition, if you see anybody whom we consider as realized people, people you know, they have talked about this love and compassion based on understanding of this coexistence, this harmony, this relationship, which is what they call as truth. So it has to do with realization of truth, number one. Number two, having realized this truth of relationship, harmony and coexistence, having the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is love, feeling of love. And then all the time thinking in terms of how to express this feeling of love, feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence, that is compassion. So we have all been talking about this truth, love and compassion, or at least this is what we have respected in the past. We have had our reverence for it. So what you're saying is that it's okay to have desires, but uh we should have the right desires and to know what is right and what is not right, we can refer to our natural acceptance. Is that Yes, I'm not only saying that it is okay to have desire. I'm saying it is necessary to have right desire. <laughs> and it is unnecessary to have wrong desire. <laughs> True. We have to have the right desire. That is what we are saying. We are saying we have to have the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. I'm not saying that, okay, if you have this feeling, it is fine. No, <laughs> I'm saying that we have to have this feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence. 
and i am saying that we should not have or we don't need to have this feeling of opposition feeling of contradiction feeling of struggle it is not conducive to harmony within and happiness within but you know this we have to be very careful when we are saying anything right it is being said with all context right if you remove the context then there is problem mm -hmm. so if you look at the context in which they were saying you know if they say at the first half that we have to have the right desire that is desire for relationship harmony and coexistence right and that is what is the meaning of truth love and compassion i was explaining now if you remove this context and then you catch this that you should not have this desire for opposition you know disharmony and the struggle then it will look more like a negation mm. and when you look at your desire you find that most of them are like that only okay so you think that these people are asking us not to have any desire <laughs> which is not true i mean these were the people who spent whole of their life you know trying to fulfill that relationship I and mean, if look at their life right the whole life they were trying to express this love and compassion i mean this example i have been taking many times you know uh, about this buddha you know somebody comes and spits on him and he said that he is trying to express something and he is not able to express in words to be able to see this and respond you know you have to have that unlimited that you know love and compassion mm -hmm. so when the christ is being crucified you know he complains that you know uh, how am i you know was to see this kind of state and then next moment he repents for it and he says you know ask for apology that i i am not able to see you know this wider meaning in it mm. he says forgive them for they know not what they do or something yes mm. so you are now first not complaining to the existence that it you know it has done something wrong to you and then you are not complaining even to these people you know who have done this out of their own sanskar so that kind of unconditional love mm. but if we don't you know kind of reach to that height and see that you know we take to very small details you know, and make a fight out of it yes बच्चा भी जब पढ़ता है हिस्ट्री तो सिकंदर महान अलेक्सेंडर द ग्रेट दैट्स अ काइंड ऑफ इंप्रेशन दैट गेट्स इंप्रिंटेड द प्रोबेब्ली फाइटिंग बैटल्स फाइटिंग वॉर्स गेटिंग सो मेनी पीपल किल्ड इज प्रोबेब्ली समथिंग व्हिच इज व्हाई शुड वी एग्जाल्ट दिस पर्सन आई मीन आई मीन देयर इज अ क्वेश्चन मार्क टू मी ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन हैव टू बी आस्क्ड नाउ ऑल दिस क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू आस्क बिकॉज़ दीस आर द प्री कंडीशनिंग टुडे that if you are rule over if you are able to rule over the world then you are great this is one of the preconditioning one of the belief and this is what we are teaching very simple thing you know i would put it the other way you know, what is naturally acceptable to you to be in relationship 
right? Or to be in opposition. That is very simple, right? We have asked it n number of times. So we want to be in relationship. Now, when we are teaching our children that there is a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest, right? Is it naturally acceptable to you? But we are teaching it as a basic principles of nature, as a law of nature, as a you know, process of evolution of nature. And we are teaching it without even you know, investigating into the reality. So if you go to a forest okay, or any garden or any, you know, this your park, Gee. you find that the grass is there, very small, tiny grass is there, right? Then small plants are there, then big plants are there, then trees are there, then tall trees are there, and they're all existing together. Where is the struggle? So if you look outside, this struggle, you know, is not seen all around as it is described. And when you look within and ask your natural acceptance, you don't have natural acceptance for the struggle, for opposition. You have natural acceptance for relationship, for harmony, for coexistence. Now we don't pay heed to this. And we keep teaching this struggle for survival, survival of the fittest. Today, the whole environment of education, is it based on competition or is it based on cooperation? So for 20 years, you know, we kind of force them into this competition. And when they come out of it, they want, you know, you want them to have teamwork in your factory, in your industry. In your company, you want them to have team, teamwork. And all through you have trained them for competition. So we have to ask these questions. In fact, see, when I mentioned, I even said that, you know, I am not even saying that what I'm observing about him you know, is there as a historical fact, I'm saying that for me, it is important that even I am thinking of dominating other. I'm thinking of ruling over the other. Is it naturally acceptable to me? And if I go with this feeling, will I be in a state of harmony and happiness or otherwise? And have I asked this question to myself? <clears throat> for me, that is important. whether there was some Alexander or not, whether he did this or not, whether this question was asked to him by some buddy or not. I have to ask this question to myself. That is my concern. And every one of us has to ask this question to himself. G. Good morning. Yes, good morning. When I read and you know, I, I got dis distracted. I'm prompted to distract. Is the decision taken by self? Yes. Very simple. But why do body do this bad thing? Body is not doing anything bad. Body why, is a good why the self, why the self take a wrong decision? <laughs> body is a good instrument, you know. And no, I you know, the word, it's a slip of tongue. You know, the self, you know, why why the self prompted us to take a wrong decision? Because I'm doing a holistic thing as per my natural because, because of lack of right understanding, because of wrong assumptions, because of wrong preconditionings, which we have to set right. This is what we are saying right from the beginning. That if we are guided by the preconditionings and sensation, we are likely to get into this trouble. And we are already in trouble. Oh. Yes. Okay. 
Is it making sense? Ah, uh, sir, I got it. This is because of uh, the, the reason behind this preconditioning, right? Yes. And also, who is responsible for preconditioning? Ultimately, I am responsible because I have taken yeah. something from outside without verification. Okay. Okay. How do we differentiate now? How do which is right and which is wrong? <coughs> you have so, been asked. Uh, beginning for you, what is right? The feeling of relationship or uh, feeling of yeah, of course, feeling of relationship. But for him, like uh, uh, his desire was to conquer the world. So it is take depending upon your desire, <coughs> what is right and what is wrong. You uh, you just decide according to that. So it, does it depend upon your uh, relationship or does it depend upon your desire where where you want to reach? Uh, you can differentiate and you can uh, say what is right and what is wrong. What we are saying is that each one of us has this natural acceptance, which is innate, which is invariant, which is uncorrupted by our preconditioning. And on the basis of that, each one of us can verify whether the feeling that we have at this moment is naturally acceptable to us or not naturally acceptable to us. So. I'm saying that if you have some desire, you check for yourself and you will find the answer. If Alexander would have asked this question, he would have also, you know, got the right answer. But he did not ask this question to himself. And we are also so, doing uh, this, going out, uh, you know, ahead with the desire, the feelings, without asking whether these feelings are natural to us or not natural to us. So at least, you know, let so us do this. We... If not done it, it is fine. We should do it. So will it vary from person to person? Like for somebody, something is right. And for some other person, something is right. So uh, will it vary from person to person? See, we have the been... Right and wrong. We have, we have been asking yeah. this question to at least by now 20,000 people. <laughs> And their answer seems to be the same. But we are still keeping it open. If there are anybody, there is anybody out of these 200 people here at this point of time, is there anybody who has a natural acceptance for feeling of opposition? That, let us verify that. <clears throat> so say, for example, some for some people, earning money is the and becoming the Ambani's is the target. So they say that is the right thing. And for them, uh, uh, going for it is the most important thing. For other person, something else, family is most important. So uh, you can, can, can you actually differentiate which is right and which is wrong? Who is right and who is wrong? This is what we are saying. Out of precondition, you have to love this. You, know? you have to become the richest man. But now, if I ask you this, I mean, let us say you are a money, you know, and I'm asking this question to you, that if you have to earn a lot of money, become the richest man on the earth, you know, what will you prefer? To do it with a feeling of relationship or to do it with a feeling of opposition? What will be the answer? So then in that case, uh, my priorities would be different. Like if, if my target is to earn money, then uh, accordingly, my preconditioning would be different uh, from those persons who's... Uh, target of earning money is set by the society, you know, by the prevalent you know, kind of notions of the society. Now I'm asking, do you have something original in you? Can you make that as a basis? If you don't think, think that there is anything there in you which is, you know, so uh, original, then fine, we are condemned and we are doomed and let us suffer. So I would not ask anybody to change. But yes, sir. at least we start looking into ourselves and ask this question whether we have something which is original, something which is innate, something which is pure and that we can access. 
and can that be the basis of my finding out what is right for me and what is not right for me <coughs> if yes then let us do it if no then we are doomed let us suffer the choice is very simple sir so in a way sir we are trying to actually change the preconditioning of our mind basically uh, in order to live in harmony that is what I, is our aim. what you are saying is the second point <coughs> first point yes, is that sir. we are trying to find out is there some basic reference in us something which is original in us something which is pure in us something which is intact inert invariant something which is uncorrupted by all this preconditioning is there something right is there something like you know natural acceptance which is naturally acceptable to me right if there is something like that then that can become the guide for my feeling my desire <coughs> the second point is what you are saying is that in the light of this now i am asking do i have a preconditioning in me which is in line with this natural acceptance or do i have a preconditioning in me which is not in line with natural acceptance and then i will make this choice whether to continue with one kind of preconditioning or the other kind of preconditioning right what to have as desire or in other words i will ask whether the guide for my desire for my feeling will be this natural acceptance or this preconditioning which is likely to be either way but i am just keeping it open for each one of you to find out so i will not say that you know this is there and you must look into it i would not even say that this is universal for me it is for you i will keep it open okay. so you have to find out for yourself amani has to find out for himself adani has to find out for himself everybody has to find out for himself mention few steps to avoid to be competitive yeah this is what we are doing right from the beginning yes sir yes sir our emphasis is not not to be competitive our yes emphasis is to be in relationship harmony and coexistence that is what we are talking about and yes. if we are in harmony in relationship harmony and coexistence then we can reach excellence yes sir it is possible to live without competition it is what we are preconditioned yes sir but let us ask ourselves that if mother is you know competition with the child we just yes. born yes sir where will we reach but but you know if we think that there is not enough competition and therefore we are not able to be happy then let us have some more competition and be happy yes it uh, means uh, the, some healthy competition it uh, for the benefit or for the positive purpose it's okay it's like that the issue yes. is feeling when i am competing with someone what is my feeling am i in a feeling of with a feeling of relationship or with a feeling of opposition that is important no obviously uh, yes yes it, obviously it is a feeling of uh, uh, opposition but if it is a feeling of relationship and this uh, and we are thinking about this progress then i think it is okay yeah progress is okay mm -hmm. when you say competition does it mean simply progress or also includes this feeling of opposition that we have to be clear it is all i have to say hmm. so i will certainly do better than what i am doing today i would like to understand things much better 
and live with them in a much better way. So that improvement I want, that progress I want. Hmm. Though the, there's a saying that to walk away from a relationship, if it is uh, you giving in all the time, yeah. But it is not naturally accepted, acceptable to me. But in the yes. process, what what is what 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 happens is you are giving, you are being taken for a ride. <laughs> so, what do I do, sir? See, look at this relationship between the mother and the child. You know, what does yes. the mother do? Mother's and child relationship is unconditional. That, that, that yes. I yes. Yes, and that is how it's this civilization, human civilization is continuing. Yes, if sir. the mother does not continue to give in, right, the mm -hmm. child will not survive. Mm -hmm. Now, we have to see this as a basic example. And from there, yes. the child has to learn that, you know, feeling of gratitude. That yes. I am there because of this feeling of giving in, you know, in relationship unconditionally okay, and that is the way the existence continues the unfortunate yes, thing is that we have been taking inspiration from wrong things you know. right sir. so in relationship you give in unconditionally yes. in relationship the other person also gives in unconditionally and then we have a very different kind of economics. Mm -hmm. An economics which is based on give and give. And which is very fulfilling for everyone. Yes. Sir. Yes. So we have to understand that because, this, you know, this natural oh. acceptance is for giving, not snatching away. Right, sir. Right. Right. And natural acceptance is for taking when somebody is giving by that feeling, you know? Yes, sir. Yes. So that should be the basis of our economics. So what if the next person uh, is uh, having a, a feeling of competition all the time? That means he's suffering. <laughs> and you are giving him. He's suffering yes. and we have to do something about for his, for his suffering. Rather than trying that to become this. like him. Yes. We have to help him to come out of his suffering. Right, sir. Right, sir. Unfortunately, what we are doing is that we also start getting into competition. So we start also start suffering like him. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. So we have to Thank make that choice. That Thank is why I am saying, you know, you have to refer to yourself. And there you will get the right answer. Look into yourself. Yes. Right, sir. Right, sir. Then you will find an answer for <laughs> yourself and to... find an answer for the other person also. Yes, sir. Yes. Today, uh, what, uh, uh, take off the, uh, the today's session, I, I found that to conquer yourself is greater than to conquer others. Yes. Yes. And in fact, when you start thinking in terms of conquering yourself, then you realize that there is no issue of conquering. You know, there is an issue of being with yourself right, you know, right. in a natural <laughs> manner. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank everybody. you very much.